2023. I am sure you are happy to be here today. Rise to your feet, lift up your hands, and let's worship His Majesty. Give Him glory and praise. Our God is good. We slept and we awoke because He sustained us. Father, we have returned with a heart of gratitude this morning to acknowledge your goodness, to acknowledge your mercy, to acknowledge your love. You are a good God indeed. Be thou exalted. Be thou exalted. Be thou exalted. Is somebody thanking God this morning? It's our covenant day of thanksgiving. God has been good to you. He has, you have any reason to thank him. Let God hear your voice of thanksgiving. Let him that has breath. Praise the Lord. And I know you have breath in your nostrils. Lift up your voices. Worship him. Praise him for sustaining your breath in his nostrils. Father, we return with a heart of gratitude. A heart of praise. You have done all things well. Everything we are today, we are by your grace. For by much shall no man prevail. For it's not of he that will it, of he that run but of God that showeth mercy. For the battle is not only strong. We owe you thanks. We owe you praises. We owe you worship. I will give it to you lavishly this morning. Be thou exalted. Be thou magnified. Be thou exalted. Be thou magnified. Are you thanking God this morning? Are you praising him? Are you worshiping him? Blessed is he that he chooses. And cause the approach unto his throne of his grace. God has been good to you. He has been good to me. We owe him thanks. Give it to him lavishly. Worship his majesty. Father, we thank you. We praise you for the free flow of your word. We celebrate your faithfulness for sustenance. We give you praise for the renewal of our strength. We bless your majesty. Be thou exalted. Be thou magnified. Praise him. Father, today send your word in a new dimension. Send your word for your power and control all things by the word of your power. Let the power dimension of your word descend this morning. We give, you, we give you praise. We worship you for the power of your word. We celebrate your faithfulness. For your grace at work in us, we give you glory and praise. Be thou exalted, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have given thanks. I am confident God has been good to you. You have testimonies. Please go to any of the major entrances. The pastors are on standby to document your testimonies. You may be given the opportunity to share in the course of the service. And God will richly bless you. Put your hands together for his body choir this morning. Lift those hands and just go ahead and worship God. Oh Lord, we bless your name. You deserve the glory. Lift your hands. And the honor, uh, Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor, uh, Lord, we lift our hands. As we bless your holy name, you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship. As we bless your holy name. voice this morning. Lord, we lift our hands in worship. Jesus. If you want to jump, you can jump. If you want to shout, you can shout. 
Someone give Jesus some praise. Magnificent, magnificent is your name. Oh, many protect and many share as you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Magnificent is your name.
Someone excited to be in church the first Sunday in the second month of this wonderful year. Give Jesus a big, you can make it bigger, make it better, make it stronger. Give him a shout of hallelujah. Please be comfortably seated. We take our call to worship in this special Thanksgiving service from the book of Psalms 47. And as our custom is, we shall be reading responsively. Psalms 47. Oh, clap your hands. All ye people, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Verse 2. For the Lord Most High is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us. And the nations under our feet. Verse 4. He shall choose our inheritance for us. The excellency of Jacob whom he loved. God is gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Verse 6. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our king. Sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. Verse 8. God reigneth over the hidden. God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. Now we read verse 9 together loud and clear. The princes of the people are gathered together. Even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. Shout aloud, amen. You are welcome. Give Jesus a big, big hand. Hallelujah. At this point, we're going to be taking a congregational hymn this morning. And it is, it is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Will you rise in your feet with me as the choir leads us this morning in this congregational hymn?
be seated. Praise the Lord. Please listen to faith the announcement in this first service. Number one, praise the Lord. Special healing miracle service holds today at the Faith Tabernacle, Kina Land. Give the Lord praise. Last Sunday, God did wonders in our midst, including healing of paralysis, partial blindness, Art palpitations and many more. Somebody celebrate the Lord. Today, the healing power of Jesus will be on full display, setting every captive free from all afflictions. The time is 11.45 a.m. Number two, covenant hour prayer continues tomorrow, Monday to Friday. Remember, this holds in over 600 locations across Lagos and Ottawa. The time is 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number three, good news. The Africa Leadership Development Center, ALDC, of Covenant University is running a professional leadership diploma program. The professional leadership Dip diploma program, PLD, is a six-week online intensive leadership development course designed to ignite and nurture your leadership potential. Enroll, enrollment is ongoing and closes February 9, 2024. Get all the details to enroll at the website shown on the screen. Number four. Praise the Lord. Our Believers Foundation class, BFC, for all our new converts and new members, holds tomorrow Monday. Note that this can either be live at any of our BFC centers across Lagos or Tan Environs or online at bfc.lfcww.org. Details on the closest location to all our new converts and new members shall be sent via SMS. The time is 6 to 7.30 p.m. Number five, praise the Lord. Week of spiritual emphasis holds between this coming Wednesday and Friday, both here in Kenalan and at all Zuna Fellowship Centers in Lagos, Ottawa, and Environs. Give God praise. <laughs> Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in the fast and break with the communion. The time is 6 p.m. daily. Number six, praise the Lord. The Education Commission is recruiting qualified and certified teachers into its faith academy and kingdom heritage network of schools where vacancies exist. Applications are required to be sent to the website shown on the screen, not later than Monday, 12 February 2024. Please visit the website for details. Number seven, praise the Lord. The online sale of admission forms into Faith Academy Network of Schools commences tomorrow, Monday 5th, February 2024. To purchase forms, 
please visit www.eclfcww.org. Please note, sales of forms will end Saturday, 30th March 2024. Number eight, praise the Lord. All youths are encouraged to stay connected to all youth alive engagements via the Youth Alive Fellowship, Winners Campus Fellowship, and the Winners Coppers Fellowship. Follow on all our social media handles for details. And number nine, praise the Lord. Be reminded to share your testimonies of the mighty act of God at testimonies at davidoedeko.com and testimonies at lfcww.org. Number 10, praise the Lord. Leadership Empowerment Summit for February comes up this Saturday, February 10, 2024. Give the Lord mighty praise. At all our areas and district facilities across Lagos and Ottawa, all pastors, ordained workers, zona ministers and assistants, all cell ministers, assistants and secretaries, zona fellowship committee members, all service unit leaders are expected to be in attendance. Everyone expected should endeavor to honor God with their presence in this prophetic service. The time is 7 a.m. And number 11, good news. Four intending couples were this weekend. Give God mighty praise. We are admonished to stand in the gap for them in prayers and share in their joy. The time is 11 a.m. Number 12, Winner Satellite Fellowship, our house to house fellowship, hold this coming Saturday at our WSF centers across Lagos and Ottawa. Remember that we shall be praying for one another and invite a neighbor to partake in this fellowship time. The time is 5 to 6 p.m. And number 13, praise the Lord. It is testimony time. Give God mighty praise. Let the following persons come forward to share their testimony. Dickness Tina Uwadiaru, Dickness Tina Uwadiaru, and Innocent Michael. Innocent Michael, Dickness Tina Uwadiaru. We continue in the announcement number 13. Praise the Lord. Next Sunday at Faith Tabernacle shall be our covenant day of settlement. Give the Lord mother praise. It shall also be our special communion service. Give God mother praise. It shall be a service to be much remembered. Come expecting definite encounters with the world. Come along with your family members, your friends, and other loved ones. Be sure not to miss this. There shall be free services, times 6 a.m., 7.55 a.m., and 9.50 a.m. Jesus is Lord. Give him praise. In this special Thanksgiving service this morning, it is testimony time. Say it boldly, my breakthrough time. Please put your hands together for Jesus. Please come up. Your name and what has the Lord done for you? Praise Master Jesus. I'm Dickness Mwadiarotina. I want to thank God for his favor, Fortune 2024. I retired as a teacher for past years, 211. But my file was missing for my gratuity and pension. Each time I called them, I go there, they told me my file was missing. But there was something I was doing from the United States. I was sowing a seed of transportation to a zone. And during Shiloh 2023, I tabled it to God. And after Shiloh, I moved. And I met them. Behold, my file was found. <laughs> and they captured me and asked me, how did I do it? Who am I? I said, I'm a child of Oyedepo, I'm a winner, and my case is different. <laughs> and everything was cleared. Everything was cleared from 211. I want to return all that glory like one leper to say, God, thank you, because everything was cleared. I thank God of this commission. Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. You are returning with your testimony this morning in Jesus' name. Your name and straight to your testimony. Fortune 2024. Congratulations. Upstanding. I remain my humble self, Innocent Michael. Your name. Innocent Michael. I'm here to judge the God of this commission faithful. I've been jobless for five years since after my NYSE. And during the course of 21 days prayer and fasting, 2023, this very year, I started praying for a job. And I heard God saying to me, my son, stop praying for a job. Pray for my kingdom, which I prayed for 
God's kingdom for souls to be saved. Throughout the 21 days prayer and fasting, I was praying for souls to be saved. Just yesterday, a job I did not apply for, a just electrification distribution company called me to come and pick my appointment letter with that interview. I am here to judge the God of this commission faithful. To God be the glory. Amen. You are next online today for your own testimony. In Jesus' name, make those hands bigger for Jesus. For those wonderful testimonies, one more time, give Jesus a big hand of praise. Amen. Right now in this service, it is time for personal supplication. We shall be going before the Lord individually, calling on the name of our God for our personal desires. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3. He said, call unto me, and I we answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. This morning as you call, God will answer you. In Jesus' name, every one of us, please rise to our faith. Everyone, rise to your faith. Lift your voice and talk unto your God.
now begin to perfect your prayer by praying in the Holy Ghost and giving thanks unto God for answers to prayers this morning. He said, call and we answer. You have called and God has answered. Why not give him thanks? Why not perfect your prayer now? Later, Prazukata. Lerote in the Lisa Broca. Marapate lezun de Breta Praduzia. Father, I thank you. I am grateful. I know that my prayer is answered this morning. Take all the glory and the praise. Wave those hands to him and say, Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayer. Please celebrate Jesus and be seated. Amen. Please let's listen to the epistle from the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Uribo. And the subject is Prophetic Focus for February 2024. Fortune 2024 greetings to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We have the following declarations from the prophetic lifelines of the year. 2024 shall be a year of unending shouts of joy as we continue to favor his righteous cause. 2024 shall be a year of fearful favor for every winner as we continue to take pleasure in the matters of the kingdom. 2024 shall be a year of all round rest as every winner enters and sustains his place in the covenant of stewardship. 2024 shall be a year of supernatural enlargement for every winner as we keep giving thanks and praise to God in and out of season. In 2024, this commission shall be stepping into fearful realms of breakthroughs as we continue to walk in the light of scriptures. In addition, prophetic lifelines for the commission includes minimum double the current size of every local assembly this year on or before the end of the first half of 2024. It has happened before and it will happen again. Minimum double the current number of home sales this year on or before the end of the first half of 2024. It has happened before and it will happen again. Personal engagement shall count the most this year as always. As we all know, God does not bless, rewards, promotes, or favor groups, but individuals. God is out to bring each one into fortune as we choose to serve him in truth and in deed this year. Furthermore, in the course of the just concluded prayer and fasting, I received the following prophetic alert. One, mind my agenda and I will take over your own affairs. Mind the agenda of my kingdom on earth and I will take over your affairs in life. Give me a priority place in your life and you will secure my priority attention that will lead to your enviable decoration in life. Seek first the promotion of my kingdom in righteousness, and it will be your launching pad to a world of exploits. If you will stay committed to advancing my kingdom, you have committed me to your continuous advancement in life. Heaven and earth may pass away, but not a line of biblical prophecy will go unfulfilled. All we need to experience in fulfillment of prophecy a prophetic word is to believe and prove that we do by engaging with the instructions that accompany them. God's word is the most valid prophetic resource bank. Consequently, any prophecy that lines up with the truth of scripture remains valid for delivery by faith. Therefore, if anyone believes in the prophetic fortune package reserved for us in the winner's family this year and chooses to line up with the demands thereof, they shall be empowered to manifest the fullness of Fortune 2024. Therefore, the prophetic focus for the month of February 2024 is, whatever God can do, faith can make happen. Shall we declare it in faith? One, two, go. Whatever God can do, faith can make happen. One more time. Whatever God can do, faith can make happen. The anchor scripture is Luke chapter 1 and verse 45. Recommended books of the month authored by God's servant, Bishop David Udebo, include Unlimited Power of Faith, The Turnaround Power of Faith, Exploits of Faith, Born to Win, and that authored by Bishop David Udebo, The Lifestyle of Faith. Remain ever blessed. Jesus is Lord. Put your blessings together for Jesus. So 
Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. hallelujah. As earlier announced, at this moment today, we shall be going before the Lord to give him thanks, especially for the successful completion of the 21 days prayer and fasting for the year 2024. Put your wonderful hands together for Jesus. God has done us well. And secondly, we shall also be thanking God for the end of the month special thanksgiving for the month of January. Therefore, together, from the depth of our soul, we shall be returning all the glory unto God, who is indeed too faithful to fail. Can I hear a loud amen? Shortly, we all shall be upstanding. The choir shall be leading us in high praises. And together, we shall be, if you have space, you come to the front. Those who are here for children, dedication, marriage, thanksgiving, and dedication. And then all of us, together, we are thanking God for the many, many blessings in our lives as individuals. So if you have space, you come to the front of the altar. If not, wherever you may be together, God shall be hearing our thanksgiving. The book of Psalm chapter 136 and verse 1. The Bible makes it very clear. Psalm 136 and verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good, for his mercies endure for how long? Say, so me, God has been good to me. Please rise up on your feet. Take your thanksgiving and dedication seat in your hand. The choir shall be leading us high praises. The people listed, please find your way to the front. Each and every one of us thanking God for the special blessings. If you have space, come to the front. If not, wherever you may be, together we are giving glory back unto God. Remember, first and foremost, for the successful completion of the 21 days prayer and fasting. Praise God. Choir. What a marvelous God. What a marvelous God. He has done marvelous things for me. What a powerful God. What a marvelous. He said to do marvelous things. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together as we welcome God's servant right now, Father and the Lord, to release blessings at this time upon each and every one of us. Put your hands together for the Lord and let's get on with the praises. Quiet. Thank you, Jesus. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, may every subject of thanksgiving today remain a testimony for life. Yeah. Every time we give thanks, we commit God to preserve the blessing, to multiply the blessing, and to perfect the blessings. So for everything that any one of us is giving thanks to God for, Amazing answers to prayers during the 21 days of prayer and fasting, the great refreshing that came upon each one, the new order of grace that we experienced, 
May this be permanent in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and for all of us who are here today presenting these gifts of God before his altar, these miracle children, as they are being anointed right now, it shall be a seal of protection, a seal of excellence, a seal of health and vitality. None shall suffer any form of breakdown. Every disorder that may be anywhere is now corrected. In the name of Jesus, they shall live in the fear of God all their days. In Jesus' name. And for all the marriages being presented before the Lord today, they are declared blessed, Amen. peaceful, Amen. fruitful, Amen. fulfilling, Amen. exemplary, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And for every other thing we bless in God for today, like uh, birthdays, uh, marriage anniversaries, uh, blessings of material things that come in various forms, May these blessings remain permanent. Amen. Everyone celebrating birthday today, you see many more years. Amen. For thanking God for whatever he has done for you today, he will multiply them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now lift up your thanksgiving seed and give him thanks in your own words. Thank him. I just want to thank you, Jesus. I can pay for your blessings, but to acknowledge you, you did this. I recognize that. Thank you, Lord. Our Thanksgiving seed is hereby received, and you are blessed in return. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Give him thanks. Praise the Lord. Again, the choir shall be leading us in high praises. Please ensure your children are water anointed before you get back on your seat and drop your thanksgiving and dedication seat. Praise God. Choir. You are marvelous, yeah. 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 Oh, my God. 
Jesus a big hand of praise. And please, you may be seated in his presence. Today is my privilege to welcome some special people into the service. If today is your first time worshiping at the Faith Tabernacle on a Sunday like this, may I ask that you please stand on your feet in God's presence and remain standing for the winner's warm welcome. Shall every winner everywhere give Jesus a big hand of praise for these precious people that he has drawn into his presence this morning. If that hand is for Jesus, you'll make it bigger than that. Is worthy of all the praise. A welcome package along with a card will be given to you right now. As soon as you receive a copy of both items, you may take your seat and quickly begin to fill that card in the course of this welcome. Please ensure that you have both items before you are seated and begin to fill that card in the course of this welcome. I want to especially welcome you on behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the Church Universal, and his servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oedipo. What is unique about this church? This church is ordained a house of liberation by divine mandate, where God stops the tears of men and women, old and young, boys and girls, where God terminates all oppressions of the devil and confers breakthroughs on all members as they believe. God has not ceased to confirm his word since this mandate was delivered over four decades ago. If you'll endeavor to abide in this church, and commit to following every instruction that you receive here for the next three months, the Lord God will bless you openly as he did Obedidom. I want to welcome you today to this breakthrough family. And may today be your entry into the realms of unstoppable breakthroughs that you have always longed for in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Therefore, to all our first-time worshipers, we say, welcome home. Give Jesus a big, big hand of praise is worthy. May I request one more time for all our first-time worshipers to please rise for a word of prayer and blessing. Please rise on your feet wherever you are for a word of prayer and blessing. Now bow your head as we pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning for these precious people that you have drawn by your mighty hand. You brought them to bless them. Therefore, by authority today, we declare each one of them blessed. Whatever concerns they may have left before coming into your presence today, let every such concern be converted to an open testimony. Lord, above all, for any one of these precious people who are yet to know Jesus as Lord and Savior or who are yet to be reconciled back to him, let today be for them the day of their salvation. We thank you because we know you have done it already. In Jesus precious name we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. It is done. Please, you may be seated. Ensure that your card is completed and submitted to the official closest to you. Once again, you are welcome and God bless you. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. Good news. In this service, it is offering time. Quickly package your offering this morning. If you have not done so, your tithe and every financial commitment you have covenanted with God Almighty before coming in for this service. And be reminded you can pay or give your offering in cash, well packaged in an envelope and label to the King of Kings. And also you can give in check in favor of Faith Tabernacle Canaan Land and also you can take advantage of our electronic channels as displayed on the screen. And as we do that, please let's be reminded of God's word in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. He that giveth sparingly shall reap sparingly, and he that giveth bountifully shall reap bountifully. Verse 6, he that giveth. He that swears sparingly shall reap sparingly, and he which swears bountifully shall reap bountifully. That means this morning as you give bountiful harvest, we follow your givings in the name of Jesus Christ. Do rise on your feet right now with those offerings in your hand and begin to worship the King of Kings with it right now. Worship the Almighty God with your offering for bountiful harvest. Fortune loaded harvest is coming your way after this obedience to this instruction this morning. Lift it up and give him the glory and worship him with it. Father, we we'll thank you. We give you all the glory for the privilege to worship you again this morning with our seed. We say thank you. Blessed be your name, O Lord. 
For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Please leave those offerings high again. Father, in the name of Jesus, in obedience to your word, we have come to honor you and to worship you. Therefore, Father, have respect unto our person and unto our offerings again this morning. And let bountiful harvest follow our obedience in the name of Jesus Christ. Let fortune-loaded harvest follow our obedience this morning in the name of Jesus. Let the windows of heaven open over every title in the name of Jesus. Rebook the devourer for our sake in the name of Jesus. From today, no more misfortune financially. Fortune, follow every of our givings from now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Your seed is blessed. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please be seated. Cast your offerings as the choir ministers.
lift up our two hands to heaven and give God thanks for a most fruitful prayer and fasting season for amazing answers to prayers for times of refreshing that each of us experience before the Lord Now ask him to speak to you this morning. Every change of story is steered by an encounter with the world. Every time God speaks to us, he creates what he says. Lord, I'm set for your word today. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. One of us, I was told yesterday, caught a word why he was planning to move out of the country in 2002. That there is no devalued currency in the world. Just have enough. Have enough. There's no amount of dollar you cannot buy with Naira. Just have enough Naira. There's no amount of CFA you cannot buy with dollars. <laughs> Just have enough CFAs. There's no amount of pounds you cannot buy with CDs. Just have enough of it. He banged the tree. Now he flows in fortune. That's how God's word changes people's stories. In the precious name of Jesus, this month shall be to each one of us a month of months. Yeah. Because the world that will open a new chapter to your life will come forth. And as your faith catches up with it, you have committed God to make it happen. Amen. Whatever God can do, faith can make happen. Who could have imagined that Sarah would give birth to a child? But God has made me to laugh. So every time you hold on to what he says, he makes you to laugh. And Isaac came. It shall be your year of laughter. Yeah. Your forgotten Isaac will come. Yeah. Never apply for a job, just obey God. And then they call you, come and take over your job. I didn't apply, he said, it doesn't matter. Mamuni Treno Garbalos. Please, please, please. We are in a school. Yes, sir. Yes. The word disciples means students. Yes, sir. Yes. We are all in the school. I'm also in the school. Yes, sir. There's no prof here. We are all students. Yes. <laughs> and studentship means you must pass the exam. The faith test is a regular test for all levels of students. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. PG, undergrad, postdoc, <laughs> forever. <laughs> Hallelujah. It came to pass out that God did test Abraham. And so it's an ongoing test. So what we're dealing with this month is a life wire. It's the life wire of everybody. Many were obedient to the faith. Christianity, the substance of Christianity is faith. Faith is the substance of Christianity. When you fail the faith test, you are afraid it doesn't work. But in the name of Jesus, it shall be a month of months for us. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And please, you may be seated. Engaging the power of faith for fulfillment 
of prophecies. Without faith, no prophecy will ever see the light of day. Faith is not a belief system. Faith is standing on the world, believing the integrity of God who authors the world, the integrity of the content of the world, and expecting to see it come to pass. So it's not a belief system. It's not your darling the way you think. Faith is a spiritual substance. You will know when it comes. The substance of things hope for the evidence of things not seen. Faith is not vague. Faith is not fake. Faith is simply expecting God to do what he says he will do as you align with what he says to do. It gives substance to our expectation, thereby turning into manifestation. May this man be a school of faith indeed for every one of us. <laughs> the writer's scripture here is 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 15. What the Lord said to David, my father, with his mouth, has fulfilled it with his hand. No one can fulfill heaven's agenda without the hand of God. And now do we secure his hand, who had believed that report, Isaiah 53, verse 1, let him expect to see the hand of God stretch forth. So faith is the only way to bring the hand of God to bear on any subject matter, including prophecies. You can't see prophecy fulfilled, I can't see prophecy without the hand of God. The reason is simple. He speaks according to his capacity to deliver. <laughs> Not according to our weakness. What are prophecies? Simply, prophecies are the unveiling of God's plan and purpose as it relates to a people or an individual. Prophecy speaks to our present, our future, our posterity, our eternity. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 21 and 22. And if thou say in thy heart, how shall we know the thing which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not or come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. That means everything God speaks comes to pass. All it requires is your faith to secure the hand of God that will bring it to pass. Remember the theme of the month, the focus of the month. Whatever God can do, faith can make happen. And blessed is she that believe it. That shall be a performance of those things which were told you from the Lord. Anything you hear from the Lord is secured for delivery. All it takes is faith to provoke the hand of God to bring it to pass. That shall be an amazing change of stories this year. <laughs> the kind 
we have never known before. Scripturally, there are three main sources of prophecies. First, the Bible, which is said to be more, the more sure word of prophecy. As mentioned in that epistle, The Bible is the most reliable prophetic resource bank. Everything God says in there, when he addresses that to you, is yours for the take. Amen. Second Peter 1, 19 to 21. We have also a more sure word of prophecy we are unto ye take heed as unto the light that shineth in darkness. Until the day dawn and the day star rises in your heart. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. But holy men spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So every word there is certified for delivery, but requires faith to come to pass. No prophecy will ever see the light of day without faith. The receiving end requires faith to have it come to pass. Without faith, it's not on the way coming. Isaiah 34, verse 16. Seek out of the book of the law and read. None of this shall fail, neither shall any want to admit. For my mouth has spoken it, and my spirit has gathered them. Very interesting. So when you read something like John 15, 16, you have not chosen me, I have chosen you. God is saying, thus saith the Lord, you have not chosen me, I have chosen you. That you should go and bring forth fruit, that the fruit shall abide. And so whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Simply meaning, I will bring you into favor. As you commit to, you know, so winning and so abiding, hmm? you secure my favor. He said, I'm the one telling you, not that somebody told you. That's how he speaks to people from his word. And the motto of people is the king's honor. God is simply saying, don't say the Lord. My honor is in the motto of people. And in the honors me, I will honor. So as we engage in bringing more people to my kingdom, you secure my honor without sweat. Don't say the Lord. And don't say the Lord, he that winners was is wise, and the wise shall inherit glory. Care for shame and reproach. And thus said the Lord, seek you for the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek first my kingdom in all righteousness. And all these things that others are dying to get shall be added to you. Simple. Every prophecy of scripture applies to whosoever believes. It's of no private interpretation. It's of no private interpretation. I said in the course of the week, there are no private revelations, no private faith, no private testimonies. Nothing about God and man is private. Everything written in the world applies to whosoever believes. Applies to whosoever believes. Applies to whosoever believes. But faith is not cheap. Faith is hard work, sir. Let us therefore labor. Faith responds to spiritual labor. <laughs> sir, sir. <laughs> Faith is no guess work. Faith is labor. You get down to see my library, someday I will take a picture and put it on the screen. It's a walk-through library. It's not a shelf. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. 
when you understand that faith is a profession, you better learn the skill. Hold them fast, the profession of your faith. For faith is that has promised. You know profession. <laughs> it's not to be a kind of, a kind of, it's not to be chartered. It's another one to be fellowed. <laughs> so, you come out as a fresh accountant, practicing accountancy. You grow to be chartered. And then you chatter to be fellowed. <laughs> Hebrews 10, 23 years. Hold them fast, the profession of your faith, without wavering. It's labor. It's labor. It's labor. You don't build faith wishing. You build faith laboring in the world. Can them of double honor who are elders among you, but those who labor in world and in doctrine. What labor? No shortcut to building faith. Labor in the world. Many have never read one book on faith in their life. So, never. I'm believing God. I'm believing God. How? How? Where is the anchor of your faith? Where is the anchor of your faith? Any faith not anchored on revelation is fake. The only secure anchor of faith is revelation. Any faith not anchored on revelation of the world is fake and cannot deliver. In Hebrews chapter 4, and verse 3 to 4. For which we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I've son of Hera, if they shall enter to my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, to bring you and I into rest. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest on the seventh day from all his works. Now, verse 5. And this will again if they shall enter into my rest. Now, sin therefore it remained that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of their unbelief. Hmm? Verse 7. Again, limited the day in David. Today, after a long time, it said, Today, if you hear my voice, I do not your heart. Now, if Jesus had given them rest, then will he not have afterward have spoken of another day? But here is what he said. There remained therefore what? A rest to the people of God. Verse 10. For he that entered into rest, he also assists from his own works as God did from his. So faith launches people into rest. That is, you have committed God by your obedience, and so it takes over. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. Let any man fail or fall after the same manner of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful. So we labor in the world to build faith that brings us into rest. Come on now. August 30th, 1980. I was reading this book and I brought it here. Seven things you should know about divine healing. The date is very <laughs> story because that was the Ogopa flood day. Right? I was in this revelation when Ogopa flood came. It was announced on the television. He took, himself took my infirmity and bore my sicknesses. So it came on the last page. So all this half reading that people are doing. Last statement. Last statement. Last statement. How do you know you are? Because Matthew 17 said, he himself took my infirmity. Is how you read two pages and close the book and say, I've read. What have you read? Okay, what have you found? Don't say you have read when you have not found anything. 
Don't say you are following when you have found anything. I read all young Cho materials to pieces. And I see the result. What you don't know, you don't know. What you won't learn, you can't know. And what you don't know, you suffer for it. Faith comes by hearing and understanding the word of God. Faith doesn't come by prayer. Faith doesn't come by prayer. You pray in the Holy Ghost will give you understanding of the word that abuse faith. Building up your faith, your, your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, who will help you assess the word that abuse faith. Faith does not come by prayer. You can't be chattered and I can't be a prayer. You read. <laughs> you pray the Holy Ghost to help you understand the reading, but it won't read for you. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, please wake up. Wake up. We are all in a school and we're writing tests to change class. If you don't commit yourself to what is required, you can't change class. It's your turn. The biblical proof of faith is rest. Any sober for you have not rested. Your faith has not developed to secure the rest. So develop your faith to secure your rest in the world of anxieties, apprehension, despair, despondency. It's your turn. It's your turn. Amen. Secondly, we assess prophetic word through personal encounters with God, like in the case of Abraham, Moses, Paul. God just showed up and delivered to you a task, meaning to say, if you will believe, I will do it through you. You can't do it, but if you believe, I will do it through you. Praise God. <laughs> okay. And thirdly, through God sent prophets. God still sent prophets away. He sent me quite a number. I've enjoyed the blessing of God through their ministries as they keep speaking to my life time and again. There were many widows in Israel until no was Elijah sent, but until the widow Zarephath. So he sends prophets. He hasn't changed. There are many lepers in Israel until no one was Elijah. Elijah sent, but unto Naaman, praise God. Uh -huh. So he sends prophets. When you receive the same prophet as a prophet, you assess what they carry for you. And this is what happens. The enemy paints a negative picture of your prophet so you can disconnect from what he carries for you. And then start struggling with life. Amen. <laughs> God still sends prophets the way of his people that are sent to speak into their lives and then um, move them forward. He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet, he shall receive a prophet's reward. But whichever the source, it takes faith to see prophecies fulfilled. It takes faith to see prophecies fulfilled. How powerful are prophecies? Prophecies are God's sworn verdict. By myself have I sworn, as I've thought, so shall it come to pass, and as I purpose, so shall it stand. Isaiah 14 and verse 24. They are sworn verdict. God's sworn verdict. I vow to do this by my integrity. Now he said to Abraham, 
by myself have I sworn that in blessing I will bless you. The blessing is still there. In multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the son of the sea saw, and the sea shall possess the gates of the enemy. Spoken several years ago. Swarm blessings. They are irrevocable. No force in hell can revoke it. Our powerful prophet is God speaks according to what he can do and will do as we believe. What he can do and will do as we believe. Luke 1, 34 and 35. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this thing be, seeing I know no man? And the angel said, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And be it unto me according to thy word, was what she said. And God came true. He speaks according to what he can do. And we saw Jesus came alive. Without Mary knowing a man. Behold thy handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. The angel departed. When you respond to a prophetic word with faith, you have committed God to make it happen. God speaks according to what he can do and will do as we believe. How does faith facilitate fulfillment of prophecies? Faith strengthens believers to see prophecies fulfilled. Through faith, Sarah herself received strength. To conceive seed. Hebrews 11 11. Whichever will happen. And the Lord visited Sarah as he has said. And the Lord did on Sarah as he has spoken. For Sarah conceived and bear Abraham a son in her old age. At the set time of which God has spoken. The year 2024 is a set time for every winner to be launched supernaturally into realms of fortune yes. that will mark the end of struggles. Yes. I said to mark the end of struggles. Yes. That will mark the end of struggles. Yes. That will mark the end of struggles. Yes. Misfortune shall be out of the way. Yes. It will not be found around you at all. Yes. Set time. Set time. Set time. Nothing strengthens like faith in the midst of battle. They was valiant in fight. In fight. They turned the armies of the aliens to flight. Nothing strengthens for the battle like faith. Hebrews 11. They quenched the violence of the fire, escaped the edge of the sword. <laughs> Out of weakness were made strong. Wax valiant in fight, turn to fly them. Faith. Faith never cows in the midst of battle. Strong faith always conquers. Always conquers. Always conquers. Subdues and suppresses all storms at will. It's time to move forward. It's time to take <laughs> covenant responsibility to building our faith. So to see prophecy fulfilled, we must receive the prophetic word in our mind. 
It's not all men can receive this saying unto whom, but them to whom it's given. We must receive it in our mind. The man that calls himself uh, calamity, Second Kings chapter 7, verse 1 and 2, his mind could not receive that prophetic word. It was too much for his mind. But as believers, we believe in the integrity of God and his word. So we allow his word to influence our thinking pattern. If God says so, God will do it. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind by the word of God. The, the word renews our mind, and we begin to operate at another frequency beyond the mind of the world. Romans 12, 2. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. It was our warfare, they know cannot but the mighty through God, to the pulling of strongholds. Casting down imaginations. Mm. And every high thing, scientific or otherwise, that exhausts everything in the knowledge of God, and bring to captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. It's the real battle for your mind and my mind to be able to lay hold on the world and despise every other form or source of information. Praise God. No matter how terrible the economy of a nation, every covenant child is to be exempted. Every covenant, every practicing covenant child, every practicing covenant child is ordained to be exempted without a scratch. Every practicing covenant businessman is ordained to be exempted without any human hand. So, there was famine in Egypt. Everything went sour. But Israel dwelt there. They went forward. They grew and multiplied exceedingly in the midst of the famine. People are offering themselves to be sold. Not this one we are talking about. Genesis 47, verse 15 to 27. Clean exemption. The good news is as you stay connected to God, you won't feel the heat of the day. Amen. I said, you will not feel the heat of the day. Amen. Your family will not feel the heat of the day. Amen. Your business will not feel the heat of the day. Amen. As you stay genuinely connected, genuinely connected. Sir, this church has never felt any economic pinch since inception, sir. Not by power, not by might. For well, three years have come and gone. We are still flowing in influence. All kinds of economic program, adjustment program, you know, review program. Work with God. He relates with us according to his riches in glory. Where the dust and the moth cannot reach. Somebody saw this change. It's your turn at last. I say it's your turn at last. It's your turn at last. Amen. It's your turn at last. Amen. So let your faith come alive. It's your covenant life wire. It's the only way to secure God's hand on your life and my life. We must believe the prophetic word in our heart. Remember, faith is domiciled in the heart. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. With the heart, man believes. You say to this man, without removed, and because of this, I shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that those things you say will come to pass, you shall have whatever you say. Mark eleven twenty three, 23. Hebrews 4, 2. 
the word preached to us also preached to them, but did not profit them, nor be mixed with faith in them, in them that had them. Next, we must work out our path to see prophecies fulfilled. There's always a path for us to play. If you get through that um, uh, prophetic, I mean, the epistle for the month, you'll find the path we must play to flow in the prophetic world that he has declared. There shall be shout of joy as long as we favor his righteous cause. Kingdom promotion lifestyle, kingdom advancement driven lifestyle. We step into the realm of fearful favor, which we call fortune, as we begin to take pleasure, no coercion, no pressurizing, the things of the kingdom. Praise God. There's always one our part to play. He said, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your own salvation. Don't wait, work it out. Work it out. All we need is to build strength into our faith in these heavily stormy days. Little faith can't stand the storms of life. Why are you so afraid, oh, you have little faith? Little faith can't stand the storms of life. It's time to take responsibility to build strength into our faith. If you faint in the day of trouble, then your strength is small. Proverbs 24, verse 10. We need faith to stem the storms of life. And it won't come upon us we have to go for it. Paul the Great said in Second King, Second Timothy chapter four, verse thirteen, he said, "The cloak which I left with thee when I was there with you in uh, Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee, and the books, but especially my notes, especially my notes." I mean, if you check. These two materials that just came out, Volume 1 and Volume 2, Treasures of Life, they are direct from my diaries, handwritten, handwritten, handwritten. We just completed a special uh, MIS Pastors Forum, and I was showing them those diaries, 1991, 1992, that are written. That is Lion's Bread. Lion's Bread. Oh, yeah, what is it? <laughs> you better say to them. Can I tell you my value for knowledge? Years ago, I came back from a trip, and my wife asked me, what did you bring? I said, come and see. So I took her to my library. We have always maintained a library in my house. We have always. Nobody can sleep there. No. You better sleep on top of each other somewhere else, but not in that room. <laughs> so open the first book, second book. Say, what I said, that's all this. I said, if I can comprehend the contents of these books, it can make me a manufacturer of the things I will have bought. Is it not today? You better go for knowledge, sir. He said, write down prosperity and imagine it because of truth and righteousness and meekness. And the right hand shall teach the deep things. So let's go for those deep things. Learn from those who know. There are many who know better than they do, so I learn from them. Except for preparing for meetings, I hardly read my books. There are those who teach me. So say to that, sir, if you know a little of what I'm privileged to know by learning, not by wishing, things will change. Amen. One of my sons went in with breaking financial hardship and shut off for seven days. He's working in fortune today. He's working in fortune today, sir. Is working in fortune today. Some have, have it all. They have even bought for people, but they have not read it. They have distributed it all over the places. I went for three days. 
It silenced the noise of lack forever. Two books and my Bible. The Law of Prosperity by Copeland and God's Witness Prosperity by Gloria Copeland. And my Bible. And in prayer and in searching and in fasting. It's labor. Imagine I didn't do that. I'm now doing like other people around the world, going from house to house. In fact, you won't be here. I thank God I come to your house how many times? <laughs> you, you look for somewhere else to go. <laughs> but I'm too glad I've never branched in anybody's house. In all my years in ministry, that can you please assist? No man has had me discuss a need. My needs are met. By light. By light. You can be the one publishing the book, you know, printing it. And nothing will happen because it doesn't come on you by printing. It comes on you by learning. All the ones I knew that I've worked with, they were learners to their end. Like T.L. Osborne, like Kenneth Higgins. Every learner to the end. Last time I was in Kenneth Higgins' office, he was reading How Faith Works by T.L. Osborne. He's reading How Faith Works. Eh? <laughs> Not that he's editing it, he's reading it to grab things from it. Wow. And then somebody sit down there and he has not read one thing in his life and he wants it to happen. Some are having Christ in their home, they have never read one book on family, like one, one. I read eight, eight books before I got married. Wow. People just rush into things without finding out what it is. And somebody said, you know why the church is going, they plant, they bury cow. Go and buy cow. <laughs> now it's a brand new day for you. Yeah. The good news is, this year will be the beginning of years for you. Yeah. And that's in all areas of life. In the name of Jesus. Can I have you say with me, Bible faith is real. Bible faith is tangible. Bible faith never lacks proofs. I must commit to building my faith through learning from those who know and from the word of God. So anything I say to you in this church that you cannot find rooted in the Bible, trash it. Trash it. There is no revelation that will beat the Bible. No. <laughs> no. No revelation will be wrong, can't have the Bible and deliver. No. 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 It's all over to us. You can't walk in the realm of faith that I walk in and not command the kind of thing I command. I walk in the steps of Copeland, I'm commanding the same thing by grace. I'm still growing. You get to a point where there's nothing God says that is difficult for you to believe. You are connected with light from the world, from those who have encountered the world and have proved it. So it, it establishes your faith. As the law lives, your days of struggles are declared over. Yeah. Second Corinthians 2 and verse 14, the word says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus, and makes known by us the sweetness of his knowledge in every place. Light is sweet. Light is sweet. The savour of his knowledge in every place. The savour of his knowledge in every place. The savour. It's only by light that we rule the world of darkness. And when light comes, faith comes along. Nobody does what he can see. So revelation 
is the birthplace of faith. That's the labor of faith. So we're reading, we're studying to come into realms of revelation so faith can come alive. Thank you, Jesus. It took God six days to build the world. He won't need two months to build this house. Come as a light. Light. And then nobody has just crumbled. Thank you, Jesus. Now, it's very important also, as we close right now, to know that faith is a weapon available exclusively to the redeemed. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world and it overcomes by faith. And it's so easy to understand that because until you are born again, you cannot see what God is saying in his world and so you cannot believe it. The natural man receives all the things of the Spirit of God because they are foolishness to him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually designed. First Corinthians 2, 14. So it's so important for us to know that until one is born again, faith hardly works. Mercy can drop from time to time, but that faith generates a result is purely for the redeemed. First John 5, 4, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. This is the vision that overcomes the world, even our faith. So the faith that overcomes is the faith that is engaged by the redeemed. By the redeemed. Until you are born again, it doesn't work. I want to welcome you to this realm of faith that guarantees all our triumph in life. So wherever you are this morning, you want me to pray with you to be born again, become a child of God, I'd be glad to do that. That's the way it works. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus saved my soul. Or someone has wandered away from the Lord, due to one pressure or another, you want to reconnect back to him, dedicate yourself back to him, you're also free this morning. So whether you're giving your life to Christ afresh, or you're dedicating your life to Jesus, at, <laughs> this morning, I'll be glad to pray with you at the same time. So wherever you are, please stand to your feet. Amen. Jesus, save my soul this morning. Stand to your feet. Jesus, save my soul this morning. Stand to your feet. God bless you. Jesus, I'm dedicating my life to you this morning. Please stand to your feet. I'm praying for you right there where you are. Thank you, Jesus. I'm praying for you right there where you are. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now wherever you are. You want to be prayed for this morning to be born again or to be restored back to the faith, please stand. Hallelujah. God bless you. And God bless you. And God bless you. Now, please bow your heads and let us pray. Lift up your right hand to heaven, all of us who are standing, and pray this simple prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud, Lord Jesus. Those who are standing with them, say it along with them. Lord Jesus, save my soul. Forgive me all my sins. I repent of them all today. And I believe in the cleansing power of your blood. Jesus, thank you for forgiving me all my sins. And today, I receive you into my heart and proclaim you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. By your grace, I shall serve you all the days of my life. Amen. Now be blessed in the name of Jesus. I cover all of us who are receiving this prayer with the blood of Jesus. Be covered against all satanic assaults. The grace that brought you into the kingdom today will preserve you for life. In the name of Jesus. 
the longer we tell change you have been looking for in your life has finally come. Amen. You will testify. Amen. You will testify. Amen. You will testify in Jesus' precious name. So shall it be. Congratulations. 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 Praise God. Amen. Please be reminded, we are Believers Foundation class that holds every Monday. You go for only two Mondays. Tomorrow, Monday, and the next one. We have them spread across the city of Lagos and Ottawa. We'll be able to reach out to you as you give us the privilege by filling those slips given you appropriately. We'll let you know which one is nearest to where you live. It's 6 to 7.30 p.m. on those two days. But for those who might not be chance by reason of their kind of job schedule, please hook on online. We have the online version. If you give it a sense of mission, the same grace will be imparted upon your life. But make sure you secure a sure foundation for your life uh, so as to avoid a return back to where you're coming from in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. We also have a card given you. We love your card. The church has some gift items for you. We have them uh, spread across the six major entrances. You'll find the tent, New Converse tent. Please call in there, submit that card. They give you the gifts. Then you're on your way back home in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. What a great year we are in. Amen. What a great year we are in. What an awesome year we are in. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please stand to your feet, everybody. Please take note of this. We are posting quite a number of things on the website to help us build up towards full realization of God's agenda for 2024 in our own lives. Can I hear you, amen? amen. Our obedience is absolutely to our benefit. Absolutely, totally, 100% to our benefit. You obey God is God. You disobey him is God. You despise him is God. You cast aspersion on him is God. It can't be bigger, it can't be smaller. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So our obedience is purely for our sake. I had this peace. A call to unwin us to awake out of slumber. No prophet is responsible for any prophetic word to come to pass in our lives. No prophet is responsible. God is not responsible for whatever word of scripture doesn't come to pass in your life and my life is not. We are. It's the faith of individuals that determines which prophetic word comes to pass in their lives. A prophetic word is at the mercy of the faith of the individual for delivery. Even the prophet himself will not see prophetic words come to pass without him or her believing it. You can say it, it doesn't mean it will come to pass tomorrow. You have to do what he says. It's no respect of persons. That's why not all prophets see prophetic words come to pass in their lives. It's no respect of persons. So awake, build your faith. Let your faith come alive. Did you get the books I said you should come? Come away. Okay. It's announced, but maybe if you see it, it will help you. The Lifestyle of Faith by David Abuye. Born to Win. If you want to win, you want to know the technology of engaging the faith weapon for your victory. Exploits of Faith. Getting outstanding things accomplished with faith. The unlimited power of faith. Uh, this will really help you to know what it takes to maximize the wonders of faith. The turnaround power of faith. You can choose any one of them. I mean, uh, and feed on them to feed your faith and stop your doubt. 
if you believe the prophetic word concerning your prophetic package for 2024, you will line up with the demands. You will. Nobody will beg you to. If you believe it, you will. I received and believed the covenant <laughs> of prosperity, and I didn't need any advice. I plugged them. I mean, and it's working. <laughs> I received Matthew 6, 33, 1976. I plugged in, and it's still working. And I remain plugged till Jesus returns. What we're empowered to experience is about what we receive and believe. We can't experience what we don't believe. So expect something unusual this year yes, as you build your faith. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, some humor. If you have a guarantee for miracle children in return for one soul within one week, would you engage or not? <laughs> that you have been looking for this for 20 years. He said, look, bring me one soul this week. And you believe he says so. Won't you engage? Now, if you have the gift of a house in return for two souls this month, who will you deliver or not? Full scale. You will ask, is it only two I can bring? <laughs> That's how many people believe in the words of men than they believe in the word of God. It's a man that promised you. The man may not be in existence again tomorrow. So the gift is gone. But this is that I got. He says, this is what I will do. If you believe, and you say, I believe, then do what I say you should do. Then you commit me to it. Between now and the end of the first half of this year, as the Lord lives, everyone who chooses to engage with God in this enlargement agenda, we see the hand of God. Amen. In all areas of your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lift up your two hands. Thank you. Lord, engrace me to build my faith to withstand the storms of life and subdue them. To remain strong all the way. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Now, may I quickly advise for every one of us, take at least one faith book. Amen. Amen. And believe God for light. Amen. Every encounter with the world builds faith. Believe God for light. And watch what will happen in your life. Remember, faith is a profession. You need to learn the skills of what makes it work. And when you learn from those who have worked it and it's work, it works for them, it becomes easy for you to understand it and comprehend it. Thank God for Smith Wiggles' word. He taught me my dominion right over all devils. I got it. 1979. There's no apartheid in knowledge. Find it wherever you come, and it becomes a personal asset. Find it wherever you can get it from, it becomes a personal asset. There's no abracadabra in the faith. I see you gain command. Yeah. The things that used to threaten you will be threatened by your presence. Yeah. The week is declared a blessed week. Yeah. Now the race has begun. So next Sunday, work at bringing one person, one. one. Don't play with God. Walk. <laughs> the race has begun. Fasting sets the pace. Now we got go. We are on our max for 21 days. Now go. When they say go, you say we are going to the toilet. Before you come back, the race is over. So <laughs> on your max means set your face red, straight to the red mark. And then you are true. Grace to obey 
grace to secure your place in this fortune agenda is yours in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Wave your hand to heaven one more time and let's give glory to God, appreciating him for the blessing that we've received in his presence. Father, thank you and blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Let's share the goodness of the Lord together. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. Praise God. Fortune is my portion in 2024. Congratulations. Amen and amen. Congratulate somebody as you go. Be blessed as you do so. If you came after the worship offering, there are officials around the altar and various exits. Carrying late offering tags, do well to drop your offering and be blessed. All our new converts, don't forget, take the We Love You card you have been given to any of the new convert tents outside the major entrances to the tabernacle. You drop the card there and pick up the gift item that is waiting for you. Also, if you want to share a testimony in the second service, quickly get to any one of the major entrances to the tabernacle. Our pastors are there waiting to document your testimonies. Be blessed as you do in Jesus' name. Choir.
put your blessed hands together for Jesus this morning. Excited to be in the first Sunday of the month of February. We doubles our end of the month Thanksgiving. Give Jesus a shout of Hosanna! Now put your hands together again for Jesus and please be seated. We call ourselves to worship this morning from Psalms chapter 47. Psalms chapter 47, I'll read verse 1, you read verse 2 until we finally read the last verse together. Psalms chapter 47. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Verse 2, church. For the Lord most high is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. Verse 4. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Verse 6. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our king. Sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. Verse 8. God reigneth over the heathen. God seated upon the throne of his holiness. And verse 9 together, want to go. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. For the sheets of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. You are welcome to church. Put your hands together for Jesus. This morning, the choir shall be leading us in congregational hymn as we all rise. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus. Choir.
together for Jesus and be seated. Praise God. Please pay attention to the following faith tabernacle announcement for the second service. Number one, praise the Lord. Special healing miracle service hosts today at the faith tabernacle Canaan land. <laughs> Hallelujah. Last Sunday, God did wonders in our midst, including healing of paralysis, partial blindness, heart palpitations, and many more. <laughs> praise the Lord. Today, the healing power of Jesus will be on full display, setting every captive free from all afflictions. Time, 11.45 a.m. Number two, covenant hour of prayer continues tomorrow, Monday to Friday. Remember, these holds in over 600 locations across Lagos and Ota. Time, 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number three, good news. The Africa Leadership Development Center, ALDC, of Covenant University is running a professional leadership diploma program. The professional leadership diploma, PLD, is a six-week online intensive leadership development course designed to ignite and nurture your leadership potential. Enrollment is ongoing and closes February 9, 2024. Get all the details to enroll at aldc.covenantuniversity.edu.ng slash enroll as displayed on the screen. Number four, praise the Lord. Our Believers Foundation Class BFC for all our new converts and new members host tomorrow Monday. Note that this can either be live at any of our BFC centers across Lagos, Otter, and Environs or online at BFC dot lfcww dot org as displayed on the screen details on the closet location to all our new converts and new members shall be sent via sms time 6 to 7 30 pm number five praise the lord week of spiritual emphasis owed between this coming wednesday and friday both here in Kenaland and at all zonal fellowship centers in lagos Otta, and environ Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast and break with the communion time, 6 p.m. daily. Number six, praise the Lord. The Education Commission is recruiting qualified and certified teachers into its Faith Academy and Kingdom Heritage Network of schools where vacancies exist. Applications are required to be sent to ecdata at lfcww.org not later than Monday, 12th February 2024. Please visit www.eclfcww.org for details. That is it on the screen also. Number seven, praise the Lord. The online sale of admission forms into Faith Academy Network of Schools commences tomorrow, Monday, 5th February 2024. To purchase forms, please visit W W. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. To purchase forms, please visit the online as displayed on the screen. Please note, sales of forms will end on Saturday, 30th March 2024. Number eight, praise the Lord. All youth are encouraged to stay connected to all youth alive engagement via the Youth Alive Fellowship, Winners Campus Fellowship, and Winners Corpus Fellowship. Follow all our social media handles for details. Number nine, praise the Lord. Be reminded to share your testimonies of the mighty heart of God at our emails as at testimonies at davidoidepo.com and testimonies at lfcww.org as displayed on the screen. Number ten, praise the Lord. Leadership Empowerment Summit for February comes up this Saturday. Hallelujah. February 10, 2024, at all our areas and district facilities across Lagos and Otta. All pastors, ordained workers, zona ministers, assistants, all cell ministers, assistants, and secretaries, zona fellowship committee members, all service unit leaders are expected to be in attendance. Everyone expected should endeavor to honor God 
with their presence in this prophetic service. Time, 7 a.m. Number 11, good, good, good news. Four intending couples were this weekend. Hallelujah. We are admonished to stand in the gap for them in prayers and share in their joy. Time, 11 a.m. Number 12, Winner Satellite Fellowship. Our house to house fellowship holds this coming Saturday at our WSF centers across Lagos and Otter. Remember that we shall be praying for one another. Invite a neighbor to partake in this fellowship time. Time, 5 to 6 p.m. Finally, number 13, praise the Lord. Next Sunday at Faith Tabernacle shall be our communion day of settlement. Hallelujah. And also double as our special monthly communion service. It shall be a service to be much remembered. Come expecting definite encounters with the world. Come along with your family members, friends, and other loved ones. Be sure not to miss this. There shall be three services. Time 6 a.m., 7.55 a.m. and 9.50 a.m. Jesus is Lord. Good news. In this service, it is testimony time. Please, if you hear your name, quickly step forward to share your testimony with God's people. Adenike Adesoye. Adenike Adesoye. If you hear your name, please step forward very quickly to share your testimony with God's people. Again, put those hands together for the King of Kings. Praise the Lord. It is testimony time. Give God mighty praise. It's worthy. Please come forward. Tell us your name and what Jesus has done for you. Shall we give God mighty praise? Praise the Lord. My name is Adenike Adese. I want to thank God for what he has done in my life. There was this mysterious wound in my leg that started in 2015 and along the line in 2018, I joined Faith Habanaku Choir and then along the line, the Lord gave me a word from Jeremiah 30, 17, he said, how we restore hell to you and how we heal your wound. And I kept on to that word and then I started believing God for my healing and then during the 21 days fasting and prayer, at the, the last week of the 21 days fasting and prayer, after the covenant hour of prayer on a Monday, the Holy Spirit told me, I had a conversation with, with the Holy Spirit where he told me that when the wound started, how did it start? I said it was, I had a sensation to scratch my right leg. He said the way, the same way you scratched it when it started, scratch it out. And you know, because this wound had never opened up before. And I was told at the clinic that there was nothing there that it would just go but it refused to go and then I scratched it and before I knew it the wound opened up and then to God be the glory the wound dried up and then okay one other thing that I did was that I applied the anointing her I kept on applying the anointing her I prayed kingdom advancement prayer and then I kept on holding on to God's word for me and then to God's glory the wound has dried up and I've come to return all glory shout hallelujah Please listen to this documented testimony. Miracle promotion after 10 years of stagnation. Give God praise. I have been stagnated for 10 years in my place of work. I attended several promotions interview, but I was always denied, even though I did very well in the examination. Again, this year, I attended another interview. I was called upon by some of my colleagues that we should go and sort, that is give bribe, so that we can be all promoted. I held on to my integrity and ignored the advice. I heard God's servant in one of the services stressed on the need to engage in kingdom advancement promotion prayers. He further said, if we take God's business first, it will in turn take our affairs as his priority. The word hit me like a thunderbolt. I started engaging in kingdom promotion prayers, both for souls and the church, not minding the issue of my promotion and that same week, the result was released and my name was included. Give God my the praise. To God alone be all the glory. The testifier is Brother Iba K. For these two powerful testimonies, give God my the praise.
Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. Right now in this service, it's time for personal supplication. Praise God. Matthew 7, 7. The Bible is very clear about this. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Verse 8. For everyone, that includes you and I, everyone that asketh, receiveth. This morning, God has placed before you and I in this service an open check. Whatever you and I ask in his name, we are returning with it today. Amen. Would you please rise up on your feet right now and lift up your voice to God, now between you and your maker. You are here in his presence in this service. What do you want to return with from here today? We have a few minutes to do that. Lift up your voice. Remember, you are praying for yourself at this moment. Ask. We have the word of assurance. We shall receive. Everyone, including you and I, that ask it, receive it. This is our hour of opportunity. Lift up your voice to God right now. Let him hear your voice as you ask. Make known unto him your high desire. It's available. But we have to ask him before we receive. Make sure heaven is hearing your voice right now. This prayer is for you. It's focused on you. Supplicating personally for that desire of your heart right now for it to be delivered. Few moments left. Take advantage right now. Now begin to give thanks unto God. If you have asked from him, surely he has heard, he has answered. Your answers are already released. Raise your voice, raise your hand if you can. Glorify the name of the Lord. Thank him right now intensely. Like that one leper with a loud voice, glorify his name. You can see your answer with that confidence. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Wave your hands to the Lord right now. Glorify his name. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. It is done. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. A loud and believing amen. amen. Please be seated. Put your wonderful hands together for the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please let us listen to the prophetic focus for the month of February 2024 from the Apostle of this Commission, Bishop David Oyeribo. You shall be blessed as you listen. Fortune 2024 greetings to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
We have the following declaration from the prophetic lifelines of the, of the year. 2024 shall be a year of unending shouts of joy as we continue to favor his righteous cause. 2024 shall be a year of fearful favor for every winner as we continue to take pleasure in the matters of the kingdom. 2024 shall be a year of all round rest as every winner enters and sustains his place in the covenant of stewardship. 2024 shall be a year of supernatural enlargement for every winner as we keep giving thanks and praises to God in and out of season. 2024, this commission shall be stepping into fearful realms of breakthroughs as we continue to walk in the light of scriptures. In addition, prophetic lifelines for the commission includes minimum double the current size of every local assembly this year on or before the end of the first half of 2024. It has happened before and it will happen again. Minimum double the current number of home sales this year on or before the end of the first half of 2024. It has happened before and it will happen again. Personal engagement shall count the most this year as always. As we all know, God does not bless, reward, promote, or favor groups but individuals. God is out to bring each one into a fortune as we choose to serve him in truth and in deed this year. Furthermore, in the course of the just concluded prayer and fasting, I received the following prophetic alert. One, mind my agenda and I will take over your own affairs. Two, mind the agenda of my kingdom on earth and I will take over your affairs and life. Three, give me priority place in your life and you will secure my priority attention that will lead to your enviable decoration in life. Four, seek first the promotion of my kingdom in righteousness and to be a launching pad to a world of exploits. Five, if you will stay committed to advancing my kingdom, you have committed me to your continuous advancement in life. Heaven and earth may pass away, but not a line of biblical prophecy will go unfulfilled. All we need to experience fulfillment in prophetic words is to believe and prove that we do by engaging with the instructions that accompany them. God's word is the most valid prophetic resource bank. Consequently, the, prophet, the prophecy that lines up with the truth of scripture remains valid for delivery by faith. Therefore, if anyone believes in the prophetic fortune package reserved for us in winner's family this year and choose it to line up with the demands thereof shall be empowered to manifest the fullness of fortune 2024. Therefore, the prophetic focus for the month of February is whatever God can do, faith can make happen. Shall we echo it together? Whatever God can do, Faith can make happen. And the scriptural anchor is Luke chapter 1, verse 45. Recommended books of the month, authored by God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo, will include Unlimited Power of Faith, Turnaround Power of the World, Exploits of Faith, Born to Win, and the last one, authored by Bishop David Abiyu, titled The Lifestyle of Faith. You are blessed. Hallelujah. As was earlier announced, today we are going to be giving God thanks specially for all of the answers that he gave to us in the just concluded 21 days prayer and fasting, as well as having our end of month special thanksgiving and children dedication. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. In Psalm chapter 92, verse 1 and verse 2, the Bible says it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. He said, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. The loving kindness and faithfulness of God has abounded toward us. And for that reason, we have come to give him the glory. Therefore, in a moment, 
we are going to be rising on our feet. The choir is going to be leading us as we're going to be celebrating God. Those who are here for special thanksgiving, for baby dedication, for, um, you know, marriage thanksgiving, will dance their way forward. But every one of us, for all of the answers that God has given to us, and I know that we have been receiving answers. Is that true? In a moment, we are going to be rejoicing before the Lord and celebrating him and giving him the glory for all that he has done. Shall we rise on our feet right now and let's begin to celebrate God. Those in the categories mentioned, you make your way forward towards the altar as the choir leads us in praise. We are saying thank you. Jesus, thank you. Jehovah, thank you. Everybody saying thank you. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord. We are saying thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, everybody say Yes, we are saying thank you, Jesus. Oh, we are saying thank you, Jesus. For the houses, for the children. Praise God. Please make way for those carrying children to make their way towards the altar as we receive our Father to release the blessing of God upon us. Give Jesus a big, big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. How many who have visited the only 21 days of prayer and fasting? How many experienced God in one way or another? Now may everyone's thanksgiving today be acceptable to God. Yeah. And for all of our end of the month special thanksgiving time, children that are brought here for dedication, marriages here for dedication and thanksgiving, in the precious name of Jesus, the blessings of promotions, blessings of employment, breakthroughs of all kinds, may this thanksgiving be acceptable to God. Yeah. For all those celebrating birthday, many more years ahead. Yeah. 
in strength and vigor. Amen. For every marriage, every marriage represented here today, for thanking God, experience peace, Amen. joy, Amen. harmony, Amen. fruitfulness, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. For any other thing we thank God for today, everything we thank God for usually multiplies, yes. normally preserved, yes. and keeps on multiplying. Yes. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, yes. everything for which I thank Him for today is declared preserved, yes. multiplied, yes. and perfected yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. And so shall it be. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. As the children have been anointed right now, I decree the oil on your head as a seal. Amen. A seal for your protection. Amen. A seal for your exemption. Amen. A seal of health and vitality. Amen. A seal of excellence. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. None of these children will cause their parents sorrow. They will all grow in the fear and the nurture of the Lord. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. And all marriages you have declared preserved. Amen. The enemy shall not have an inroad. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift your thanksgiving and dedication seat before the Lord and appreciate God with it. Lord, thank you for the blessing and privilege of honoring this. Let it be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. The choir will lead us. Those in front will be dancing our way back to our seat. Everyone, you drop your thanksgiving and dedication seat before the Lord as we celebrate God together. Choir.
please, you may be seated. Give Jesus a bigger hand of praise. Today, it is my privilege to welcome some special people into the service. If today is your first time worshiping at the Faith Tabernacle, may I ask that you stand on your feet in God's presence and remain standing for the winner's warm welcome. Today is your first time worshiping at the Faith Tabernacle. Please stand to your feet and remain standing for the winner's warm welcome. Winners around, please give Jesus a big, a big hand of praise for these precious people that he has brought into his presence today. The welcome package along with a card will be given to you to fill in the course of this welcome. Once you have received it, take your seat and begin to fill it. A card and a package will be given to you. Please, once you have received your copies, be seated and begin filling the card. I want to specially welcome you on the behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church universal, and his servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oyedepo. What is unique about this church? This church is ordained by God, a mountain of divine intervention, where every issue that has defied solution can be supernaturally perfected. Our turnaround God has been at work in this commission for over four decades. Surprising members of this church with unimaginable testimonies as they believe. If you will endeavor to abide in this church and commit to following every instruction you receive here for the next three months, the, God, the Lord God will bless you openly as he did obed Adam. Since God is no respecter of persons, expect the ten around God to visit you upon this mountain as you believe. I want to welcome you today to this ten around family. And may today be your entry into the realms of divine intervention that will result in the delivery of your long-awaited testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Therefore, to all our first-time worshippers, we say, welcome home. Please, may I request that you rise to your feet one more time, all our first-time worshippers, for a word of prayer and blessing. Please rise to your feet one more time for a word of prayer and blessing. May I ask that you bow your heads as we pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for these precious ones that you have brought into your presence today. We are confident that you brought them to, bl to bless them. Therefore, we're asking, Lord, that all of these precious ones be blessed today in the name of Jesus Christ. Should they have left anything behind at home as a concern before coming into this service, Lord, we're asking that all of this concern at their return be turned to open testimonies for them in the name of Jesus Christ. For everyone among them who has not yet given their lives to Christ, Lord, we're asking that today be their day of salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. For each and every one of them, we are asking that they will return with a netto be a counter with you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Please be seated. Ensure you complete the filling of your forms and hand them over to the officials closest to where you are seated. God bless you once again. You are welcome. Church, give Jesus a bigger hand of praise. Right now, in this second service, it is offering time. Let's declare that loud and clear, my blessing time. Quickly put together all of the seats you have brought in honor of Jesus in this second service. That includes our Sunday offerings, our tithes, 10% of all our increases, and every other covenant you have made before the Lord. Remember, you can give via cash or checks. Address to Faith Tabernacle Canaan Land, and we can also take advantage of our various electronic giving platforms. You'll find them all displayed on the screen. Proverbs 3 9 and 10. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. The scripture declares that honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruit of all thine increase. And the effect is in verse 10 so shall thy barns be filled with plenty. And thy presses shall burst out with new wine. That shall be our testimony here today. 
Please join me. Rise on your feet. Lift up those seats with honor to Jesus this morning. And let's together appreciate him for the privilege he has given to each and every one of us to appear this morning with a seed in our hands. Lift up those seats. Present them before the Lord this morning. Present them joyfully. Present them cheerfully. Lord, thank you for your blessings. Of the abundance of your blessings upon my life, I've brought this seed of honor. I brought the seed of worship. Let it be acceptable before you. Thank you, precious Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. With those seats yet lifted, Heavenly Father, again this morning, we are grateful for the privilege to appear in your presence with a seed in our hands. We declare for every giver this morning, let our seats be acceptable before you. For every title, according to your word, let the windows of heaven continue to remain open concerning us. In the name of Jesus Christ. And according to your word, we buke the devourer for our sakes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. Let every give of any kind of seed, let it be acceptable before you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Someone who believes God, say louder, amen. Please be comfortably seated. We cast our seats with joy as the Faith Tabernacle Choir ministers.
a big hand of praise. The shout of joy shall not depart from our houses this year. You'll be hearing congratulations all through the year. Concerning your family, 
Your business? Yeah. Your children? Yeah. Your career? Yeah. Your health? Yeah. You shall be hearing only congratulations all through the year. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your two hands one more time. Give God thanks for the privilege of seeing the first Sunday of the month of February. Thank him one more time for the diverse encounters during the three weeks of prayer and fasting. Thank him for his diverse blessings since the year began. Ask him now to speak to you this morning. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Lord Jesus, we are all looking up to you this morning. Send us your word. Amen. Let each one return with a definite encounter. Amen. Let the light of your word break through into each one's heart. Amen. Reorder our steps by your word. Amen. Correct our steps by your word. Amen. Instruct us by your word in the way to go. And thank you for this. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise God. Fortune is my portion in 2024. Congratulations. Please get seated. Let me again congratulate you on a most refreshing adventure in the fasting and prayer of January. May the fruit of it keep speaking in our lives Amen. all through our days. Amen. Remember, we have a seven week long of thanksgiving and rejoicing and prayers for harvest of answers to our prayers. Because the answers must meet us singing, rejoicing. I'm pressing for delivery. It's the last digit on the prayer telephone call. Be anxious for nothing, but in all, everything by prayers and supplications with thanksgiving. Make your request known unto God. He responds to our cries with a demand of thanksgiving. So be thankful. God never lies. In everything, give thanks. The will of God concerning us. That you have done the will of God, you need patience, you can be sure of delivery. You need patience, you can be sure of delivery. But within the next six weeks remaining now, answers will be tumbling down in your direction. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone's head will be restored, head will be restored with proofs. The siege of unemployment shall be broken. The storm of marital crisis shall be calmed. 
the siege of marital delays shall be broken. Amen. Business and career stagnation shall come to an end. Amen. Everything you prayed for during 21 days of prayer and fasting shall deliver as testimonies. Amen. But the demand is the answer must meet you singing, rejoicing, and praising God. So ensure to worship accordingly, and then you see God in action. The prophetic focus for the month has read to us is whatever God can do, faith can make happen. Is God of all flesh? Is there anything too difficult for him? So whatever God can do, faith can make happen. If you can believe, all things that God can do are possible to him that believes. Mark 9, 23. All things that God can do, they are possible to him that believes. All things that God can do, they are possible to him that believes. The anchor scripture for that is Luke 1, 45. Blessed is she that believeth, there shall be performance with those things which are told out from the Lord. Which are told out from the Lord. Whatever God can do, faith can make happen. Every word spoken in your direction this year will come to pass like a dream of the night. As long as your faith remains in place, will your anchor hold in the storms of life? As your faith anchors on the world in all its strength, everything God said will come to pass in your life. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? Our teaching series for the month for our Sunday services is captioned, Engaging the Power of Faith for Fulfillment of Prophecy. This is a highly prophetic church. We've been riding on prophetic wings since inception. Whatever he said at one time or another, he did it as he said it. What does it take for us to see and experience fulfillment of prophecy? Faith is the master key to experiencing fulfillment of prophecy. Why? Whatever God says, only his hand can bring to pass. There is no agenda of heaven that the human strength can handle. He speaks according to what he can do and will do if we believe. In 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 15, Solomon was praying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which spake with his mouth unto David my father, and as with his hand fulfilled it. He said with his mouth, what his hand can make happen. Not what you and I can make happen. And now do we secure the hand of God, who had believed that report, let him expect the arm of God to be stretched forth. Isaiah 53 and verse 1. He is searching for his hand in response to our faith. When our faith comes alive, he says, here is my hand to make it happen. Here is my hand to make it happen. Every single prophetic word that has come in your direction, this year we see the light of day. We happen like a dream of the night. It shall be a year of years for every one of us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. What are prophecies? Prophecies are the unveiling of God's plan and purpose as it relates to a people or an individual. God's plan and purpose. It shows us things to come. It reveals to us things that are yet to be. So we can set our expectations right to see them come to pass. Scripture already, there are three main sources of authentic prophetic words. One, the Bible, which is said to be the most sure word of prophecy. 
the highest form of prophecy. The most proven. bank of prophecies. Every word that is tested in fire seven times, Psalm 12 and verse 6. There is no impurity in it, no contamination in it. That we're still speaking and bringing to pass till date. The words of the Lord are pure words. Second Peter 1, 19 to 21. The word says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well as you take it as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Please understand that. That simply means every prophetic scripture applies to whosoever believes. It is not limited to one person or another. It applies to whosoever believes. Just like salvation applies to whosoever believes. God has not marked anybody for hell. It applies to whosoever believes. So every prophetic scripture applies to whosoever believes. But holy men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So it's not human views. It's God passing his agenda through men. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, will of man, but holy men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. It's the most dependable prophetic source, most reliable. He's spoken to me so much more from his word than any prophet ever spoke to me. I had from him, I've been redeemed as a king and a priest reign on the earth. At 16, it got to me like thunderbolt. I'm not a slave to him. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is not slow. He got to me, 1970. I'm not in a hurry. Do a tardy, wait for it. So I surely come to pass, it shall not tarry. The year will be awesome for you. He still speaks today to us by his word. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, he said, God in Sunday times and in diverse places has spoken to us, to the fathers by the prophets. As in this last days, spoken unto us by his son. Prophetic scripture will be having a, that, that will be the end thing this end time. End thing this end time. Those hear the law, for instance, seek ye first my kingdom in all righteousness, and all these things that others are dying to get shall be added to you. Prophetic packing. Those said the Lord, if you will come to keep favor my righteous cause, I'll make you to keep shouting for joy all the days of your life. It's all there. Thus said the Lord, bring your retire to my storehouse and prove me now if I will not open you the windows of and bring pour you the blessing until you have not the normal to take them. Every statement of scripture should be preceded by thus said the Lord, thus said the Lord. Because my mouth has spoken, my spirit has examined them. Isaiah 34, verse 16. Every provision of scripture should be preceded with thus said the Lord, thus said the Lord, thus said the Lord. Said the Lord. Don't say the Lord, time to favor you has come. 
All you need is to keep taking pleasure in the affairs of my kingdom. My fortune package for you will be delivered Amen. without any fear. Amen. Every provision of scriptures, let it be preceded by thus say the Lord. It, it will make a lot of money to you, sir. Mm. A lot of money to you. A lot of money to you. The Bible is a prophetic bank from where we draw by faith. It's full of open checks and we draw on them by faith. There is not one thing that belongs to one person that does not belong to another one. What I say to one, I say to all. Oh. Open provision, but accessible only by faith. May heaven's agenda concern each of us come to pass this year in grand styles. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, hear what he said. Give heed to it. It will bring, bring the star in you out. As unto a light that shines in darkness. Until the day dawn, the day star arises in your heart. By biblical prophecy, causes the star in you and me to rise. Because God cannot lie. Can I hear you, amen? amen? It's your turn. Amen. Second source is through personal encounters with God. And most of us experience quite some during the just concluded prayer and fasting time. God just showing up and said, this is the way to go. He showed up to Abraham, I have a plan for you, but get out from here to where that plan will be delivered. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. He showed up to also Moses, I'm going to send you down to Egypt to go and bring my people out. Personal encounter, unveiling God's agenda. That is God showing up to you and to me what he wants from us, what he wants to do with us. He appeared also to Saul, as we saw in Acts chapter 9. Thirdly, God, prophetic words are released through our God-sent prophets. There are prophets sent to you and to me in this journey. There were many, many widows in Israel until none was Elijah sent. But unto the widow of Zarephath, Luke 4, 25 to 27. There are many lep lepers in Israel, unto none was Elisha sent, but of Naaman the Syrian. So he still sends prophets today to his people. I have prophets sent to me that speak into my life from what they receive from the Lord. Amen. No professional prophets with long road and bushy hair. I'm talking about the word of the Lord coming through. What they speak to you, you can find it in the word. Can I hear your amen? amen. We were having dinner sometimes, and one of these, my prophet, just stood up from the glues and began to invoke. Psalm 112. This man fears you, Jesus. He began to recount those things. One by one. There are prophets sent to you. They open up 
new chapters to your life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. What they speak come to pass. Yes. When you choose to believe it. Yes. What they say come to pass when you choose to believe it. So the validity of the source of the prophetic word notwithstanding, it takes faith to take delivery. Whether directly from scriptures or through divine encounters with God or through prophets sent to us, without faith, no prophetic word will see the light of day. So we need to mind our faith to see God's agenda come to pass in our life. We need to pay attention to our faith to see God's word come to pass in our life. And so this month, we're going through the school of faith to see how we can build our faith, build strength to our faith, to stamp the storms of life and put us in charge in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. How powerful are prophecies? One, prophecies are God's sworn verdicts. Whatever can stop God can't stop the way against his word. Wherever the word of a king is, there's power. Isaiah 14, verse 24. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely as I've thought, so shall it shall come to pass, and as I've proposed, so shall it stand. In response to Abraham's sacrifice, God said, By myself I sworn that because you have done this thing, <laughs> now can I tell you this? Sworn blessings respond to things that we are commanded to do. It is in doing them that we invoke the sworn blessing from God. You have done this thing. You have not withheld your son, your only son from me. <laughs> Therefore, in blessing, I will bless you. You multiply and multiply thy seed. Inside so thy seed shall hold the I'll be blessed. Because you have done this thing. May each one succeed in doing what we invoke swarm blessing this year. Yeah. An oath for confirmation is the end of all strife. When God swears a blessing, forget about the devil. Forget about the enemies. When God swears a blessing on your life, forget about it. The end of all strife. Is the end of all stripes. For men very little swear by the greater, and I know for confirmation, is to them an end of all strife. Whenever God strives, I mean, releases the swan blessing, all strives come to an end. We are in God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel. He confirmed it by an oath. Every prophetic word is sealed by an oath. Sealed. Sealed by an oath. God is saying, I vow to do this. I swear by myself. If you will do this, you have committed me. Number two, God speaks according to what he can do and will do if we believe. Our powerful our prophecies, he speaks according to what he can do. And with God, all things are possible. He's God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for him? He speaks according to what he can do and will do as we choose to believe. What he can do and will do as we choose to believe. What we can do and will do as we choose to believe. In Luke chapter 1, verse 34 and 35, and then verse 38. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this thing be, 
seeing I know not a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The power of the Most High shall overshadow thee. Therefore, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And verse 38, and Mary said, Behold thy handmaid, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed. That is, no man but a son with a name. What? God speaks according to what he can do and will do as we choose to believe. It's your year. Yeah. It's your year. Yeah. It's your year. Yeah. That man in 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1 and 2, when Elisha brought forth a word from the Lord that this time tomorrow there shall, there shall be surplus of food on the city of Samaria. He said, even if God opened the windows of heaven, shall this things be? <laughs> and he got judged for it. He got judged for it. They trampled him under feet and he died. God is not a man. <laughs> He's in his own class. He doesn't look for how to get things, or he creates things. What he says he creates. Please understand this. Every prophetic scripture is valid for all time. Because God is not looking for how to do it. Whatever he says, he creates. Whatever he says, he creates. Whatever he says, he creates. Whatever God says, he creates. And we saw that in Genesis chapter 1. And God said, and God saw, and God said, and God saw. And God saw everything that God said. I mean, it was very good. God said, God saw. So when you receive prophetic word, you just committed God to create it. He's not looking for it. The environment has no bearing. What he says, he creates. What he says, he creates. He never needs a laboratory to do that. What he says he creates. Now, how does faith facilitate fulfillment of prophecies? From the testimony of um, uh, Sarah, the Bible said in Hebrews 11:11, 11, 11, Sarah herself, through faith, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. And was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Every prophetic word you believe strengthens you to take delivery. Strengthens you to take delivery. Every prophetic word you receive strengthens you to take delivery. In weakness, you work strong. They turn the armies of the aliens to flight. They acquired the fury of the fire, the, the, fought, the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. In weakness were made strong, waxed brilliant in fight, turned, the fight, fl turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Unusual strength comes as faith comes alive. Unusual strength. Unusual strength. And the Lord visited Sarah as he said, and the Lord said to Sarah as he said, he said Sarah conceived and bears Abraham himself at the set time. God keeps time, sir. The year 24 is ordained for our fortune package as winners. Yeah. You won't miss your own portion. Yeah. It is only for what we receive and believe that we are empowered to experience. He came out his own, his own receiving, but as many as received him, he gave power to become the sense of God, which as many as believed on his name. A prophetic word we truly receive and believe, we are empowered to experience. We are empowered to manifest. We are empowered, John 1 12, we are empowered to manifest. You receive the word that whatever God says is a possibility. It's a reality, not possibility. It's a reality. You receive the word and you choose to believe the word. You're empowered to experience it. 
empowered to manifest it. Can I hear your email? Amen. Until the earth receives our seed, it cannot be turned to harvest. So until we receive the prophetic word, we cannot experience reality. We cannot experience its reality. We must first receive it with all intent and purpose. With no iota of doubt, we receive it. God said it. I believe it. That said to say. God said it. I believe it. That said to say. God said it. I believe it. And that said to say. Remember, faith is of the heart. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. With the more conversion is made unto to salvation. It's of the heart, not of the head. Therefore, wage war against every thought that's contrary to the truth. Is they are to rob you and me of God's best. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds, which includes imagination, and every height that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Praise God. Imagination, high things of the world. Contrary thoughts to the truth. You will bring them into subjection to, man, to manifest the reality of God's agenda for your life. You bring them into subjection. Now watch him. Watch. Now, we came into this forest. It didn't make any sense. Common, scientific, intellectual. It didn't make any sense. But God said so. And so, we received it contrary to imaginations of man. Contrary, sir. To every form of knowledge on church growth. Contrary to every thought that grows the church. You don't lay those aside, you won't get there. You won't get there. God knows I have needs. Yes, he wants to meet your needs, so give. <laughs> he knows you have needs. But to meet your needs, you must give. Your need can cancel scriptures. I have the last me. He said, yes, give it. Then you have all the me you need. So people think that the explanation will cancel the truth. You are wasting time. Stop negotiating the truth. Truth is truth. Take it or leave it. Truth is truth. What? Take it or leave it. You are in for the best of time. Amen. You are in for the best of time. Amen. Now, listen to this. When God said, come, let's go over to the other side. That's an agenda. But storm may rise on the way. And to deal with the storm, you need faith. We are going to the other side. We are not going to sink in the middle. Amen. Amen. Okay. And so storm arose as they went. You remember the story in Luke chapter 8? Why are you so fearful? Oh, your little faith. So little faith can't stand the storm of life. It's time to build our faith against the stormy days. You don't start practicing for a match on the pitch. You get set before the game. These exams have no timetable. So you don't get ready, you live ready. You live ready. Time to get ready may not be there. We can't wish strong faith, we have to build strong faith. We cannot wish strong faith, we have to build strong faith. There is no prophetic word without our part to play for delivery. Abraham, I want to bless you. 
make you a blessing, make you a great name. But depart from here to see it happen. And so Abraham departed. Show me your faith without your works. Show me my faith without my works. Today what we have, people are just saying things without finding out what they should do to make it happen. We must walk out our path to see prophecies fulfilled. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 6, as we round up. Saying, therefore, it remained that some must enter the in, and they to whom was first preached entered not, entered not in because of their unbelief. Therefore, verse 11. Verse 11. Let's go to 11. Let us therefore live up to enter into that rest. Let's any man fall after the same manner of unbelief. For the word of God is powerful. Chapter the end of Jesus' word. Let's labor in the world to build our faith which will bring us into that rest. Labor in the world that will make you smile at the storms when they rise. Labor in the world to build your faith. Now, in 1 Timothy 4.17, or 5.17, 5.17, in the second name of the world now, who are elders among you, particularly those who labor in word and in doctrine. Laboring in the world. Laboring in the world. Laboring in the world is what builds faith. It doesn't drop on people's shoulders. On laps. It's labor in the world that generates strong faith that makes a believer smile at the storm. Don't wait for faith to grow, grow your faith. Paul said, Bring me my coat, my books, and especially my notes. Every man of faith remains a lifelong learner at the feet of Jesus. All the depth, both of wisdom and knowledge of God, I want to his ways, and his past are past finding out. Let him that think he knows anything, he knows he doesn't know anything yet, as he ought to. As he ought to. So grace to remain a genuine and committed learner. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Yes. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. A learner studies to find answers to questions. He's searching for solutions. He's searching for the way forward. So he's taking note. Every learner is a note taker. Every learner is a note taker who is sent forth. I mean, we released two volumes of, from the archives, treasures from the archives. They are my notes, my notes. They are not the teachings, they are the, my notes. I have my teaching notes and I have my feeding notes. Praise God. Hallelujah. You don't feed your faith, you starve it to death. So nobody can keep his faith alive without fresh word. Nobody can. A lion does not die because there is no grass. He doesn't feed on grass. He dies because he's going to find a prey. And the world became flesh. Amen. amen. <laughs> so you search for the flesh of the world. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. That's the lion's feet. Please invest in the knowledge of the truth. Faith comes by hearing and understanding the word of God. We saw in the episode of uh, the Ethiopian Enoch, he came into Jerusalem and was on his way back. And the angel of the Lord said to Philip, go and join yourself to that chariot. Acts chapter 8 and verse 26 to 35. Understanding what all did how can I accept one should guide me? And Philip took him up from the same scripture. And in verse 36 and 37, his understanding opened. Can't I be baptized? And then he was baptized. And became a child of God. His understanding opened through the ministry of Philip. There are 
ministry gives in the body, their mission is to be, to help us perfect our faith, to bring us to the same level where they're operating from. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. Read it now, it's in Ephesians 4, 11 to 13. He gave some apostles and some prophets and some past evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the defining of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So we need to locate those ministry gifts Amen. And tap into what they have discovered. And follow suit if you are interested. Amen. Tell us, but taught me the way to hear in the voice of God. And what a blessing, sir. What a blessing. From his book. Oh. Nobody will sit down with you and be talking to you everything. From his book. Amen. I heard the voice of God for the first time in my life from his book. I'm shouting and screaming today, you know, Matthew 33. Also, just me taught me or led me the way to it from his book, The Man God Uses. Copeland taught me the way to prosperity or led me to discover the way to it. And it's my personal side today. So, they are there for the perfecting of the saints for the edifying of the body of Christ in love, till we all come in the unity of faith unto the fullness of the church of Christ. You can't develop yourself. No eaglet ever imagines an eagle on his own. You ride on eagle's wings to become an eagle. No baby nurses itself to maturity. Every baby is nursed by parents or guardians. So you can't be self-made or you can become self-destruct. No. No. A.W. Tozer taught me, the harder you follow me, the higher you fly. Amen. Amen. Ah. Wake up, wake up, and do something about your life. Yes, you know, I'm talking to you 76, 77. So I wasn't called to ministry. So you don't have to be a ministry. I mean, and you have a ministry anyway if you are saved. At the ministry of reconciliation. So the nobody should harass you about I have ministry, I don't have ministry. Everybody has ministry. Yes, sir. <laughs> Every child of God has a ministry. Yes, sir. The ministry of reconciliation. Or don't you know that? Yes, Second Corinthians chapter 5. Yes, Everybody. So it's your commitment to learning at his feet that determines your portion in life. So get down to that level. I brought a book here. Seven, th seven Keys to Divine Healing by Kennedy again. That book was what opened my dominion over sickness. Sir. August 30th, 1980, the day of Gumpak floor took place. Light broke out. The last page, the last statement. So some people just uh, scan like newspaper. Is that how to study? Last page, last line. Came down, whoo! Himself took, as I, feel, I saw him carrying it on his head. I never returned it. Somebody told is changing. Amen. The good news is that the year must answer in everyone's life. Amen. Strong faith is a must. To see prophecies fulfilled in our lives because of all kinds of storms that arise along the way. Jesus is Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your right hand to heaven and give God thanks. Give God thanks for light. Give God thanks for light.
In Jesus' precious name, we give him thanks. May each one receive grace today to be committed to building his or her faith and to keep doing so for life in the name of Jesus Christ. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Please, if you are here this morning and you are not born again yet, you have this grand opportunity to consider your ways and return unto the Lord. Until a man is born again, they cannot see the kingdom of God. The amazing blessings in there, he can't see it. The wonders they are reserved for everyone, he can't see it. Because all I've seen and come short of the glory of God. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. It's available to everybody. So if you're here this morning, you'd like me to pray with you to be born again, become a child of God. Very glad to do so. Or you want to return back to Jesus. You were once there, perhaps, but under certain pressures, there was a disconnect between you and your father. You want to reconnect back to him. I'd like to pray for the two groups. So whichever one you fall into, you like me to pray with you. Please stand to your feet. I pray for you right there where you are. I'm praying for you right there where you are. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The Holy Ghost is touching somebody here to get up on his feet. Do that quickly. Do that quickly. It will be one experience we'll never forget in your life. Jesus saved my soul this morning. Forgive my sins this morning. Make me a child of God this morning. God bless you as you do. Now, all of us who are standing, please bow your heads for a moment. Lift up your right hand to heaven. And pray this simple prayer after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, save my soul. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again to set me free from the power of sin and Satan so I can serve the living God. Today, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe all my sins are now forgiven. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. By your grace, I shall serve you all the days of my life. Amen. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. I may today mark a turning point in each one's life as God has spoken in the name of Jesus. I cover each of you with the blood of Jesus against all satanic assaults. Be covered to the day of his appearing. No one among us will turn back. We shall run the race to the end. Each one shall make it to heaven and live a triumphant life on the earth in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. 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 Please complete your forms and pass them on church officials around with you. And at the end of this service, there's a card given you. We love you card. Please report it to any of the new converse tents. They are along the six major entrances of the church. Uh, you submit that card. They give you some gift items from the church. It will be a lot of blessing to you. Also be reminded, as you had in the announcement, the Liberty Foundation class, it was every Monday, 6 to 7.30 p.m., across several hundreds of locations in Lagos and Nota. Through your address, you can reach out to you to let you know which one is closest to where you live. You go for only two Mondays, then secure a sure foundation for your new fan faith. No building has a future without a sure foundation. Please ensure to engage. In case your job schedule will not allow for that, you can take the online op option that we have, the address there on the screen. Uh, you log in and give it a sense of mission. You will have the same impartation come on your life as you go through that course, in Jesus' name. Shall we all rise to our feet? Give the Lord another big hand of praise, everybody.
Amen. 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 By the grace of election, we have amazing volumes on faith in this commission that has turned the life of too many people, both within and outside this commission. Spend time. Spend time. Spend time. It will be a worthy investment. It will stabilize your life in season and out of season. I've been in the midst of all kinds of dangers in my life, but at peace. The evidence of faith is being at rest in the midst of the storms. And when you are at rest, God takes over the battle. The Lord shall fight for you as you hold your peace. But it takes faith, strong faith. Strong faith, sir. Strong faith. To be at rest in the midst of danger. We have just lost one engine on our plane, 1998. And I knew that, but the others didn't know. Because I went to check up in the cockpit. So I, I was on patrol. I got to the cabin and said, would you like to have some snack? Yeah, 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 yeah. If I ever told them we lost any engine, I would lose all of them. They just be jumping out. Like parachutes. Amen. There was nothing jacking inside me. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing shook. I was too sure of his presence. I was too sure of his war. Amen. Rest in the midst of the storms requires strong faith. Requires what? We ran into a narrow bridge in 1984 that could never take two cars under any measure. But here was a lorry coming on the other side, and we had entered before we knew, around 1.30 a.m. in the morning. Without strong faith, I would swerve into the stream, and then I'd bye-bye forever. But suddenly, he would give his angel a charge over me. They'll bear me up upon their windsor and I'm on the narrow bridge. Hmm. <laughs> it's inside the spirit. So, so there's no way anything external can shake it. You give the angel charge over me, they'll bear me up when I'm on a narrow bridge. Lest I dash my foot, not even my head. <laughs> we passed there supernaturally, dramatically, inexplicably. <laughs> without any brush. This thing has to get into your spirit. Faith is domiciled in the spirit of the believer, not outside. Amen. Yes, the devil came and presented me in a coffin. And in the sleep, I answered, because the spirit man doesn't sleep. I said, Satan, you must be a dummy, for there is no wisdom, no knowledge of cancer in the grave. No one sees himself in the grave and stay there. Get lost. Some slept, never woke up. The devil just showed them their death and they accepted it. In the night, in the sleep. Don't, don't reduce it to intellectual exercise. It's a spiritual exercise. Yes, sir. Get the word of faith into your spirit. Yes, sir. Into my spirit. Into your spirit. Yes, sir. My wife said she had miscarriage. I said, No, it can never happen. Can I have my food, please? Mm. It didn't need prayer. Mm. It didn't need prayer. You build your faith against the stormy days. Build your faith against the stormy days. We escaped the potential air crash. Woo! I said, peace be still. Hey, that's what you also do. But people help to build me as I allow them to by consuming their materials and say how God has been working in their lives and which word was working in their life. Lift up your two hands. Lord, now everybody receive grace to take responsibility to build your faith into realms of strength. That will not make you cow in the face of the storms. Take that grace, take that grace, take that grace. Take that grace.
I receive grace to build my faith. That I keep in the realm of triumph for life. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. May I recommend, therefore, that each one selects at least one book on faith and endeavor to consume it during this month. You'll be amazed at how much potential your faith has as you do it. We have these books read in the epistle, um, was it The All and Power of the Word? I think power of faith is the one we are looking for. The unlimited power of faith, exploits of faith, born to win, and then the one by Bishop David Abioye, the lifestyle of faith. These materials will help to prop your faith to next levels and enhance your level of command over life situations and circumstances. You will never suffer defeat again. In the name of Jesus. Now the race is on. This church will be minimum twice where we are now. <laughs> now we have done the prayer and the fasting. It's been on your marks. And now the wind is blown. We are now on the go. So from next Sunday, begin to bring in your harvest. <laughs> Every soul you genuinely prayed over, we surrender. Every soul you prayed over and passionately invite will follow you. Amen. Every unsaved soul that follows will be saved here. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Remember, God does not bless groups, He blesses what? Individual. He does not promote groups, He, he promotes what? Individual. He does not honor groups, He honors what? Individual. He does not bless groups, He blesses what? Individual. It's your turn to be blessed, Amen. it's your turn to be promoted. It's your turn to be honored. Yeah. Go in peace. Yeah. Return with your testimony. Yeah. Remember, every prayer you prayed, the answer must meet you singing, rejoicing, and praising. Singing, rejoicing, and praising. May the thanksgiving grace keep increasing on your life. Yeah. Because the next six weeks, it was seven weeks last Sunday, you will take every prayer item as answered. Amen. Every prayer you prayed, you will take them as answered. Amen. Miracle jobs this week. Amen. Miracle marriage contest this week. Amen. Restoration of marriages this week. Amen. End of stagnation in business this week. Amen. End of frustration in career this week. Amen. Every soul you desire to see saved by God using you, they shall be delivered. Amen. Every name on your list will find Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So welcome to your era of fortune. The days of misfortune, they are over in your life. Yeah. In Jesus' precious name. Yeah. Lift up your two hands and give God thanks. Shall we together share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship? God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of God. Praise God. Fortune is my portion in 2024. Congratulations, amen and amen. Congratulate somebody as you go. Be blessed as you do. If you came in after the worship offering, there are officials around the altar and various exits. Carrying late offering tags, do well to drop your offering and be blessed. Also, all of our new converts, don't forget to take the We Love You card you have been given to any of the new convert tents outside the major entrances to the tabernacle. You drop the card in the tents there and they give you a gift item for your edification. And once again, if you want to share your testimony, in the third service, quickly rush to any one of the major entrances to the tabernacle. Our pastors are waiting there to document your testimonies. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Choir.
rejoice and be glad in Him. I will rejoice and be glad. I made up my mind to sing praise to the Lord. This is the day He has made. I will rejoice. All over, I can't compare to you. Oh, Lord. 
Somebody shout hallelujah. You are glad to be in this very first Sunday in the month of February. Lift your voice and shout hallelujah. Put those hands together for Jesus and please take your seat. We are going to be welcoming ourselves into God's presence from Psalm 47. Psalm 47 and we will read responsibly. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Now verse 2, church. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. Verse 4. God is gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Verse 6. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. Now verse 8. Now together, verse 9, the princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham, for the shields of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. You are welcome. Put your hand together. Right now, in this service, the choir will be leading us in a congregational hymn. We shall all be rising as we sing, Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Please, let's rise as we take the congregational hymn. Just to take him out. 
give Jesus a big hand of praise and please be seated. Praise the Lord. Please listen to faith tabernacle announcement in this thought service. Number one, praise the Lord. Special healing miracle service host today at the Faith Tabernacle Kinalan. Give God mother praise. Last Sunday, God did wonders in our midst, including healing of paralysis, partial blindness, heart palpitations, and many more. Celebrate the Lord. Today, the healing power of Jesus will be on full display, setting every captive free from all afflictions. The time is 11.45 a.m. Number two, covenant hour prayer continues tomorrow, Monday to Friday. Remember, this holds in over 600 locations across Lagos and Ottawa. The time is 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number three, good news. The Africa Leadership Development Center, ALDC, of Covenant University is running a professional leadership diploma program. The professional leadership diploma program, PLD, is a six-week online intensive leadership development course designed to ignite and nurture your leadership potential. Enroll, enrollment is ongoing and closes February 9, 2024. Get all the details to enroll at the website shown on the screen. Number four, praise the Lord. Our Believers Function Class BFC for all our new converts and new members holds tomorrow Monday. Note that this can either be live at any of our BFC centers across Lagos or Tan Environs or online at bfc.lfcww.org. Details on the closest location to all our new converts and new members shall be sent via SMS. The time is 6 to 7.30 p.m. Number five, praise the Lord. Week of spiritual emphasis holds between this coming Wednesday and Friday, both here in Kenalan and at all Zona Fellowship Centers in Lagos, Ota, and Environ. Give God praise. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in the fast and break with the communion. The time is 6 p.m. daily. Number six, praise the Lord. The Education Commission is recruiting qualified and certified teachers into its Faith Academy and Kingdom Heritage Network of Schools where vacancies exist. Applications are required to be sent to the website as shown on the screen, not later than Monday, 12 February 2024. Please visit the website shown on the screen for details. Number seven, praise the Lord. The online sale of admission forms into Faith Academy Network of Schools commences tomorrow, Monday, 5th February 2024. To purchase forms, please visit the website shown on the screen. Please note, Sales of forms will end on Saturday, 30th March, 2024. And number eight, praise the Lord. All youth are encouraged to stay connected to all youth alive engagement via the Youth Alive Fellowship, Winners Campus Fellowship, and Winners Corpus Fellowship. Follow our social media handles for details. Number nine, praise the Lord. Be reminded to share your testimonies of the mighty act of God at testimonies at davidodeco.com and testimonies at lfcww.org. And number 10, praise the Lord. Leadership Empowerment Summit for February comes up this Saturday, February 10, 2024. Give God my praise. At all our areas and district facilities across Lagos and Ottawa, all pastors, Ordained workers, Zona ministers and assistants, all cell ministers, assistants and secretaries, Zona Fellowship Committee members, all service unit leaders are expected to be in attendance. Everyone expected should endeavor to honor God with their presence in this prophetic service. The time is 7 a.m. Number 11, good news. Four intended couples wear this weekend. We are admonished to stand in the gap for them in prayers and share in their joy. The time is 11 a.m. Right now, it is testimony time. Give God praise. Please let the following persons come forward quickly to share their testimony. Toriola Samuel, Toriola Samuel, and Dickiness Adetutong Conke. Dickiness Adetutong Conke and Toriola Samuel. We continue the announcement. Number 12, Winner Satellite Fellowship. Our House to House Fellowship holds this coming Saturday at our WSS centers across Lagos and Ottawa. Remember that we shall be praying for one another. Invite a neighbor to partake of this fellowship time. The time is 5 to 6 p.m. And number 13, praise the Lord. Next Sunday at Faith Tabernacle shall be our covenant day of settlement. And also double as our special monthly communion service. 
It shall be a service to be much remembered. Come expecting definite encounters with the world. Come along with your friends, your neighbors, your family members, and other loved ones. Be sure not to miss this. There shall be free services. The time, 6 a.m., 7.55 a.m., and 9.50 a.m. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. In this service, it is testimony time. Please come forward and share your testimony with the brethren. Your name falls and what the Lord did. Once I was blind, now I can see. Praise the Lord. Toriola Samuel is my name. A night before the first miracle service, I woke up in the middle of the night with an attack. I had no medical condition, not on drug, but I just discovered my left hand was lifeless. I couldn't make use of it. So I knew I had to come for the medical service. I came. Hands were laid upon me, at, as the man of God said. And by the time I got home, the lifelessness, the pains, everything, gone forever. And I've come to give all the glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Next, please. My name is Ronke Adeduto. I want to bless God for destroying seven year academic stagnation in my PhD. I, I was stagnated for seven years, wasn't moving forward. And at the end of the day, I held on to Papa's prophetic word in 2022. Papa will say, Success is not an ambition, it is your birthright in Christ. That lifted up my spirit. And I get myself committed to a kingdom advancement service through the platform of the zone and as a translator in the Yoruba church. And lo and behold, by the help of the Lord, I continue to engage in thanksgiving. And here I am today, January confirmed a doctoral degree order to the glory of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Who is the door of all this testimony? Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Very shortly, we'll be left individually before the Lord in a session of personal supplication. Our Father has told us the race has begun. And right now, you'll be going before the Lord presenting your desires. And as you do, God will hear you. In Jeremiah chapter 33, at verse 3, the Bible says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and I'll show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Please present your request before the Lord. Right now, take any position. You can see it. You can kneel. You can be on your feet. Whatever. But make sure God is hearing your voice. Now go ahead and speak to the Lord. Please, everybody, let's be on our feet as we pray. Let's all stand on our feet as we pray.
Make sure you are calling on the Lord. He has given us an assurance. I will answer you. Make sure you are calling this morning. Now let's begin to give God thanks. Let's begin to give him thanks. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise. We magnify you. Thanksgiving is the greatest expression of our faith. We are prayed, believing he has heard us. Now lift up your hands to heaven. Wave them to Jesus. He has heard us. Father, we are grateful. In Jesus' holy name, we are prayed. Put your blessings together for Jesus and please be seated. Praise the Lord. Please listen to this epistle from the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oyedepo. Subject, prophetic focus for February 2024. <laughs> Hallelujah. Fortune 2024 greetings to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We have the following declarations from the prophetic lifeline of the year. 2024 shall be a year of unending shouts of joy as we continue to favor his righteous cause. 2024 shall be a year of fearful favor for every winner as we continue to take pleasure in the matters of the kingdom. 2024 shall be a year of all-round rest as every winner enters and sustains his place in the covenant of stewardship. 2024 shall be a year of supernatural enlargement for every winner as we keep giving thanks and praise to God in and out of season. In 2024, this commission shall be stepping into fearful realms of breakthroughs as we continue to walk in the light of scriptures. In addition, prophetic lifelines for this commission includes minimum double the current size of every local assembly this year on or before the end of the first half of 2024. It has happened before and it will happen again. Minimum double the current number of home sales this year on or before the end of the first half of 2024. It has happened before and it will happen again. Personal engagement shall count the most this year, as always. As we all know, God does not bless, reward, promote, or favor groups, but individuals. God is out to bring each one into fortune as we choose to serve him in truth and in deed this year. Furthermore, in the course of the just concluded prayer and fasting, I received the following prophetic alerts. One, mind my agenda and I will take over your own affairs. Two, mind the agenda of my kingdom on earth and I will take over your affairs in life. Three, give me a priority place in your life and you will secure my priority attention that will lead to your enviable decoration in life. And four, seek first the promotion of my kingdom in righteousness, and it will be your launching pad to a world of exploits. And five, if you will stay committed to advancing my kingdom, you have committed me to your continuous advancement in life. Heaven and earth may pass away, but not a line of biblical prophecy will go unfulfilled. All we need to experience fulfillment of prophetic word is to believe and prove that we do by engaging with the instructions that accompany them. God's word is the most valid prophetic resource bank. Consequently, any prophecy that lines up with the truth of scripture remains valid for delivery by faith. Therefore, if anyone believes in the prophetic fortune package reserved, for us in the winner's family this year and chooses to line up with the demands thereof shall be empowered to manifest the fullness of fortune 2024. Therefore, the prophetic focus for the month of February 2024 is whatever God can do, faith can make happen. Hallelujah. 
Can we declare it together? Whatever God can do, faith can make happen. And the anchor scripture is Luke chapter 1 and verse 45. Recommended books of the month authored by God's servant includes unlimited power of faith, the turnaround power of the word, exploit of faith, born to win the lifestyle of faith by David Abuye. Remain ever blessed. Jesus is Lord. Put those in again for Jesus. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. Right now, we shall be going to a session of special thanksgiving. First and foremost, for the success of the 21-day prayer and fasting. Put your hands together for the Lord. And secondly, for the end of month, thanksgiving for marriages and children dedication. I'm sure God has done us well. Can I hear? Do I have a witness in the house? If God has done me well, oh. So shortly we all shall be upstanding. The choir shall be leading us in a session of high praises. We shall be having in front of the altar here those who are here today for children dedication, married thanksgiving and dedication. All of us have enjoyed answers from the Almighty God in our session of 21 days prayer and fasting. If you have space, you come to the front of the altar. If not, wherever we may be together, we shall be returning all the glory unto God for his faithfulness, for his goodness, and for his mercy. Psalm 150, verse 6. The Bible is very clear about this. Let everything that hath breath. Do what? Do what? Please rise upon your feet. Take your thanksgiving and dedication seat in your hand at the same time. The choir begins to lead us right now in high praises. We have all the people listed in front of the altar here as we give God quality thanks. Praise God, choir. Everybody testifies, you are good. You are good, Jehovah, you are good. Everybody testifies, you are good. You are good, Jehovah, you are good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We 
would you please lift up your voice right now on a personal note? Thank God for his faithfulness unto you, for his goodness, for his mercy, for his kindness. Let him know how grateful you are. Let him know how thankful you are. Raise your voice. Personally, thank him now. Glorify his name. Bless him. Bless him. And thank him. And thank him. Give him back all the glory. Father, we give you thanks. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Heavenly Father, today we have returned, first and foremost, as a church family, to thank you for the success of the just concluded 21 days prayer and fasting. Father, accept our thanksgiving. For answers to our various requests, Father, we thank you. The testimonies are already here with us. And we know they will continue. Take all the praise and all the glory in the name of Jesus. Whatever you do is forever. Therefore, these testimonies for this prayer and fasting season shall be permanent. We thank you for all the marriages that are here today for thanksgiving and dedication. Lord, over each and every one of them, let your blessings abide. We decree and declare they shall be fruitful. They shall be joyful. They shall be worthy examples for others to follow. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone believing for miracle marriages this year, Lord, say to them. Amen. We thank you for all the children that are here today for thanksgiving and dedication. They are your heritage. Lord, as they are presented to you today and they have been anointed, let them be set apart. Amen. Let each of them live long and strong. Amen. None of this one shall be cut off in the middle of their days. They shall remain sources of joy to their parents and to the body of Christ. Father, we use them as point of contact for people believing for miracle babies. Settle them supernaturally. For each and every one of us standing here today, thanking you for one material blessing or another of houses, of vehicles, of miracle jobs, of bad days, celebrations. Lord, whatever we stand here today thanking you for, let it never be turned to sorrow. This same time next month, let's all have many, many more reasons to give you back all the glory. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Would you lift up your thanksgiving and dedication, say, live with it unto God, present your seed unto him. Father, behold the seed in the hands of your people. This seed is hereby declared blessed. Multiply back a miracle fold. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And loud and believing, amen. Again, the choir shall be leading us in high praises. Together, we shall be rejoicing. Drop your thanksgiving and dedication seed. Ensure your children and word are anointed as you get back on your seat. Praise God. Choir. Come and join me, sing hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a big, 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 big hand and please be comfortably seated. Right now in this third service, it is my privilege to welcome some special people into this service. If today is your first time worshiping here at the Faith Tabernacle on a Sunday morning like this, may I request that you stand on your feet in God's presence and remain standing. Today is your first time here at Faith Tabernacle. Kindly rise on your feet, church. Let's give Jesus a big hand for these precious people as they rise up everywhere. We can make that club bigger and better for the Lord. A welcome package and a card will be given to you. And as soon as you receive your own copy of both items, you may please be comfortably seated and commence filling the card in the course of this welcome. As soon as you receive your own copy, please be comfortably seated and commence filling the card. I want to specially welcome you on behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church universal, and his servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oyedipo. What is unique about this church? This church is ordained by God as a center of signs and wonders by a divine mandate, where God turns impossible cases into open miracles. We continuously see God changing the stories of men and women, old and young, boys and girls, as they engage with the truth of God's word as taught upon this mountain. And for over four decades, God has continued to confirm his word in this church, thereby making every member a wonder to many as they believe. If you will endeavor to abide in this church and commit to following every instruction you receive here for the next three months, the Lord God will bless you openly as he did to obey them. Church, let's say loud amen today. I want to welcome you today to this home of signs and wonders. And may today's encounter usher you into the realms of ear-tingling testimonies that you have always longed for in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, to all our first-time worshipers, we say to you, welcome home. Welcome home. Church, let's give the Lord a big hand. May I at this point request that you suspend filling those cards and please rise on your feet. Our first-time worshippers, kindly suspend filling those cards and rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Please rise and bow your heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again this morning for this precious once you have brought here to worship with us this Sunday morning. We acknowledge that no one can come except you draw them. You draw this ones here to bless them. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, we declare each and every one of these precious people blessed in Jesus' name. If they left any issue of concern back home before coming to church this morning, let it be upon their return back home. Let such issues be converted to open testimonies. And Lord, if there be any one of them that is yet to have an encounter with you, yet to be born again, let the visitation in this service mark their own salvation. And by all means, each one of these precious ones returning with an open testimony from this service. Thank you, precious Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Church, our amen can be louder. All our first-time worshippers, please kindly take your seats. Complete filling those cards and pass the cards to the officials beside you. One more time, you are welcome. God richly bless you. Church, let's give the Lord a big hand. Right now, in the service, it is offering time. So what is saying louder, my blessing time. Please, if you have not yet done so, quickly package your offerings, your worship offering, your tithe, and whatever other financial commitment you have brought to honor the Lord in this service. And as we do that, please remember, you can give in cash. You can also give by check, made payable to Faith Tabernacle, Kenalan as well as you can also use any of the electronic given channels as displayed on the screen. And as you give today, the Lord will honor your offerings in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalms 96, 
um, verses 8 and 9. He said, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his court. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. I'm sure someone is ready to worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Rise with your offerings, lift it to heaven, and give thanks to God. Honor him. Bless his name. It's a privilege to appear before him to worship. And thank you, Jesus, for the privilege to give my offerings in this service, to honor you with my tithe. I am grateful and I thank you. Blessed be your name. Thank you for open heavens. Thank you for showers of blessings. Thank you for rain of financial fortune. I give you all the praise. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayer. Please keep those offerings lifted. Our Father, we thank you for the privilege to honor you and to worship before you this morning. We ask that every unlifted be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let rain of financial fortune pour on every giver today in Jesus' name. For every tighter, your heavens remain open in the name of Jesus. And the devourer will not come near your work in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you because everyone seed is blessed and we are all returning with our blessings. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Please be seated comfortably. Cast your offering with joy while the Faith Tabernacle Choir ministers. Lord, you fight all my battles for me. 
body and let's give glory to God. Let's appreciate him and give him the praise. He is worthy of all the glory, worthy of all the honor, worthy of all the adoration. The one who is good to us in all circumstances, let's give him praise. Father, we give you the praise, the glory, the honor, the adoration. You are worthy of praise. You are worthy of glory. You are worthy of honor. Thank you and thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. And blessed be your name. And blessed be your name. Thank you, mighty, mighty God. Now let's begin to ask him to speak to us this morning. I've come before you this morning to hear your voice. I've come to receive your word. I've come to encounter your light. Speak directly to me today. Let your word come with power. Let it transform my life. Let it change my story. Let it change my level. In the name of Jesus, thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Lord Jesus, this morning we have come before you full of thanks, appreciating and glorifying you for all that you have done, starting with all of the visitations of the 21 days of prayer and fasting. Lord, we say thank you. For the rain of answers and manifestations that have been coming forth, Lord, we say we are grateful. And Lord, this morning our eyes are fixed on you, asking that you will speak directly to us. By your word, let every one of our lives be changed supernaturally. We thank you because we know you have done it already. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. And please, you may be seated in his presence. If that hand is for Jesus, you can make it bigger than that. He's worthy of all the praise. The prophetic focus of the month was declared to us. And that is, whatever God can do faith can make happen. Can we say that together? This month, as your faith and my faith comes alive, we shall see in our own lives that which God can do. Somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. The happenings in your life and my life this month, the only explanation will be this is the hand of God. If you believe it, say it loud, amen. And our teaching series, which we are beginning for our Sunday services this month, is captioned Engaging the Power of Faith for Fulfillment of Prophecies. Engaging the Power of Faith for Fulfillment of Prophecies. It's important that we begin this morning by first identifying what prophecies are. Prophecies can be said to be the unveiling of God's plan and purpose for a people or for an individual. The unveiling of God's plan and God's purpose for a people or for an individual. Ezekiel chapter 12 and verse 25. The Bible makes us understand there. It says, from the Lord I will speak and the word that I will speak will come to pass. It shall no more be prolonged in your eyes. He says, for the word I will say a word and I will perform it, said the Lord. That is prophecy. It is the unveiling of God's plan, God's purpose for a people of an individual. Remember that our God is a God of plans and purposes. Jeremiah 29 verse 11, I know the thoughts I have towards you, they are thoughts of good, not, it says, and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So our God is a God of plans and purposes. The Revised Standard Version says, I know the plans that I have towards you. He said they are plans for your welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. So we serve a God of plans and purposes. Acts chapter 15 and verse 18, he said, known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. We serve a God of plans and purposes and he's in the habit of unveiling his plans to his people. That is the pattern of God. Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 9. The Bible tells us there, it said, The former things have come to pass. New things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I will tell you of them. That's prophecy. 
Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 10, the Bible tells us there, it said, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient time, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. So we serve a God of purposes and plans and he unveils the plans and purposes to his people. And the unveiling of those plans is what we refer to as prophecies. Now, we discover from scriptures that there are three main sources of prophecy. Number one is the Bible. The Bible, in fact, is referred to in scriptures as the more sure word of prophecy. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19 to 21. He said, 2 Peter 1, 19 to 21. The Bible tells us there, it says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto you do well to take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. So the Bible is a book of prophecies. Is a book of prophecies. That's why we see in the book of Isaiah chapter 29, verse 11 and verse 12. Isaiah 29, 11 and 12. It says, And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. It says, And then it was delivered to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot read it because it is sealed. And it was given to one that was unlearned. And he said, Read this. He said, I cannot because I am unlearned. So according to scripture, the Bible is a book of prophecies. God's servant referred to it in the first two services as a prophecy bank. It is a book of prophecies. Genesis to Revelation, loaded with prophetic pictures of the future of the redeemed. Shout hallelujah. That's why we are told in Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 16. It says, seek out of the book of the law and read. None of these shall fail and none shall want a mate. It says, because the mouth of the Lord has commanded it and his spirit has gathered them. So every statement of scripture is prophetic in nature. And there is nothing that has the capacity to stop it from being brought to pass. For somebody hearing my voice today. Every prophetic word of scripture that you have held on to, I see it manifesting practically in your own life. If you believe it, say loud, amen. amen. Secondly, we discover that prophecy comes through personal encounters. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, we have the example of Abraham. Abraham encountered God and the Bible said, The Lord said unto him, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. And I will bless you. You will be a blessing. And then it says, Abraham departed and the blessing started. As you obeyed what God commanded, suddenly he began to see what God had promised. So from scripture we discover that prophecy can come through personal encounters with God. And I know that many of us, particularly through the just concluded 21 days of prayer and fasting, there are prophetic downloads that you have received from the start of the fast to the conclusion of the fast. Those prophecies are personal encounter prophecies. That is God visiting with you as an individual and telling you his intention. And I know that for somebody who has received such and is holding on to such this very year, Every one of such words that God has spoken concerning this season, you will see them come to pass. Amen. If you believe it, say loud amen. amen. I said, if you believe it, say loud amen. amen. The third is through God sent prophets. So, one is through the word, the Bible, the second is through personal encounters, and number three is through God sent prophets. God sent prophets. In Luke chapter 4, verse 25 to 27, the Bible tells us there, it says, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah. He said, when the heaven was shut for three years and six months, but unto none of them was Elijah sent, but unto that widow in Zarephath. He said, there were many lepers, but unto none of them was Elijah sent, but unto Naaman the Syrian. So there is a prophet sent to you. Say with me, there's a prophet sent to me. Come on, say it like you mean it, there's a prophet sent to me. The quicker you and I recognize that, the better for us. God has ordained prophets for you and for me. The ones ordained to you, sent to you. And for those of us under the canopy of this commission, the prophet sent to you is his servant. 
is the one God has sent to you. Your word is in his mouth. So there are prophets sent to us. When we begin to align ourselves with the prophetic dictates that come from their mouth, we begin to see things happen on our behalf. There are prophets that are sent to us. You see, this is one of the vital realizations that we must come to in our walk with God. That yes, we have prophetic words from scriptures. It is called the most sure word of prophecy. We have prophetic encounters that we have with God one-on-one. -on -one. But then we also have prophets that are sent to you and to me. That when we align with what it is that God says to them and says to us through them, we begin to see those things manifest practically in our lives. My prayer is that every one of the prophetic lines that God has spoken through his servant to you and to me, in this year of fortune, we shall see it practically come to pass. Amen. If you believe it, say loud, amen. amen. I said, if you believe it, say loud, amen. amen. If you believe it, say the loudest, amen. amen. This is so important. So we must come to that point of realization that prophetic words come through these vital channels. But, no matter how valid any prophetic word, it will take faith to see prophecies delivered. No matter how valid, how potent, it will take faith to see prophecies delivered. Luke chapter 1 and verse 45. It said, blessed is she that believes, for there shall be a performance of the things that were told her of the Lord. So there is a need to inject your faith into prophecies to see it answer on your behalf. This is so important. There is need to inject faith into prophecy to see prophecy answer on your behalf. Shout hallelujah. This is so important. So we must come to realize that our faith is a non-negotiable factor in seeing the fulfillment of prophecy. It is God's own to declare. It is man's own to believe. Until you believe what God has declared, you cannot see what God has declared come to pass. So prophetic fulfillment is on the premise of you and I coming to the point of faith concerning that prophetic word. Coming to the point of faith. So it's not enough to know the prophecy. It's not enough to have the prophecy. It's not enough to write the prophecy. It's not enough to read the prophecy. It is vital to believe the prophecy. Until faith is injected, the content cannot be delivered. Until faith is injected, the content cannot be delivered. My prayer this morning is that for each one of us, via the word you are receiving today, your faith will come alive. I said 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 your faith will come alive. Come alive. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now how powerful are prophecies? How powerful are prophecies? Number one, prophecies are God's sworn verdicts. They are God's sworn verdicts. Behind the prophecies and oath, they are God's sworn verdict. Genesis chapter 22, verse 16, down to verse 18. Here is the word of the Lord. He said, and he said, by myself have I sworn said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, he said that in blessing I will bless thee. In multiplying I will multiply thee as the stars of heaven and the sun that is at the seashore and thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. And verse 18, he says, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Why? Because thou hast obeyed my voice. Take note, prophecies are God's sworn verdicts, but they are reaction to man's obedience. They are God's sworn verdicts, and they are reactions to man's obedience. In Hebrews chapter 6, 
The Bible tells us beginning from verse 16 down to verse 18. We are told there, it says, For men verily swear by the greater. <laughs> and an oath for confirmation is to them the end of all strife. He said, God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we may have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold on the hope that is set before us. What is God saying? If it has come from the mouth of God, it is a sure banker. There is nothing that can alter it. It is a legal tender in heaven. We must come to recognize that prophecies are not just mere statements. They are sworn verdicts. They are sworn verdicts. It is God taking himself to the court of heaven to swear an affidavit on the behalf of man. That means that you and I can actually take what God has said and hold it wholeheartedly. It is the, it is the, it is the evidence that what it is that he has said has already been directed in your, in your own direction. This is so important. So prophecy is something that we must see as a sworn verdict from God. It is a sworn verdict from God. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Kenneth Hagen of blessed memory will call our faith in that verdict our title deed. So we must come to the point where we believe what God has said. If a person will give you a land, he cannot carry the land to give you. He will carry a paper to give you. The transfer of the document to you is called a deed of gift. It is actually the transfer of the property to you. The property is transferred on a paper. God transfers his blessings and packages in his words. When he speaks it, he has sworn it. When he has sworn it, it is available for you and me. Shout hallelujah. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. I said, somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Now, that means that the words of God are seen in scriptures, among others, are not cunningly devised fables. No. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 16, the Bible says that we have not followed cunningly devised fables. These are not statements of trickery. These are not statements to excite you. These are statements of fact in the realm of the spirit. Made available to you and to me. Obtainable by our faith and obedience. So we must come to recognize that when it comes to prophecy, they are sworn verdicts. They are the affidavit of Jehovah. Given in your direction and my direction. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. So we must come to recognize what they are. But it is faith that authenticates it for delivery. It is faith that authenticates it for delivery in your life and my life. That's why the Bible said faith now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Whatever is in the unseen realm, you take delivery of it by faith. So our faith is what is required. And our faith is expressed in our obedience. You see, it is doing faith that is genuine faith. The faith that puts to work what God demands is what you call genuine faith. If you look, for example, at all the prophetic lines for the year, you discover that it, is, it shows you what God has provided, but what God has also demanded. There are demands that are tied to the provision. If you are going to see the provision, you must meet the demands. It is meeting those demands that are expressions, among other things, of your faith in the provision of what God has said. My prayer today is that not one of us will miss out on what God has spoken concerning this year. Amen. Number two, God speaks according to what he can do and will do when we believe. He speaks according to what he can and will do as we believe. So, God is not looking at your own ability to determine what he's saying. He speaks according to what he can do and what he will do as you and I believe. This is so important. So, the question is not the ability of God. The question is the capacity of faith. The question is never the ability of God. 
The question is usually the capacity of faith. Now think about this practically. If God, if, if, if rain is falling outside and it's raining cat and dog, if you put a cup outside, how much water will you gather? Talk to me. How much water will you gather? A cup full. Now, if you put a bowl outside, how much water will you gather? A bowl full. If you put a bucket outside, how much water will you gather? A bucket full. If you put a drum outside, how much water will you gather? A drum full. If you put a tank outside, how much water will you gather? A tank full. What you can contain is what you can collect. And what faith has capacity to contain is what it can collect. It's so important for us to come to that realization. So when we are talking about faith, it is what is required. God is like, he brings down the package like rain, but faith determines what you and I can collect. So it is about what God can and will do as you and I believe. That means there is a, an active partnership. You agree with me that no matter how much rain falls, if you have no container outside, you have no content to collect. It is falling, but you can't receive it. So absence of faith means zero collection. Little faith, little collection. Big faith, big collection. Massive faith, massive collection. Gigantic faith, gigantic collection. It's so important for us to come to that realize. That's why Jesus, the, the, the man came to Jesus and asked him, he said, Lord, if you can do anything, please heal my son. Jesus said, no, that's not the question. It's not about whether I can do anything. He said, can you believe? It's not whether I can. It is whether you can believe. Faith is a spiritual conductor. It is what connects you to the power of God and conducts it to the situations of life. Is somebody getting it? Now listen. We know that in physics there are different kinds of materials. There are conductible, there are non-conductible materials. Is that true? Okay. Now, if you have a transformer, its task among other things is movement of power. If you put a metal on that transformer, maybe copper, whatever the case may be, it will move power from that transformer to a particular destination. Whatever it hits, it carries power from there. But if you put a notebook on it, nothing will move. Why? It is not conductible. When faith is connected to God, it draws power in the direction of any situation. But when faith is absent, it is like putting wood or paper. The power is there, but it cannot move in the direction that you and I require it. That's why faith is a non-negotiable factor. Hear this. When faith is absent, people will lack evidence. But when faith is present, people will have evidence. From now, I see it's one of us. Come into the realm of unusual evidences in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what that means? It means that when you engage your faith in line with what God has said, no matter how impossible it may look, it comes to pass. That's what we saw with Mary. Mary came and met with Jesus. Luke chapter, met, met with, um, with the angel. Luke chapter 1 verse 34 and 35. And the Bible says, she said, how can this thing be seen that I don't know a man? And here is what the Bible says. He said, and the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, the holy thing which shall be born unto thee shall be called the Son of God. When you look at this, it looked as if God did everything and Mary did nothing. But verse 45 says, Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of the things that were told her by the Lord. So faith was her connection to power. Power eradicated impossibility. So whatever men call impossible can be cleared by the power of God. All that is required is your faith and my faith. When faith comes alive, you discover that the power of God moves in the direction of any situation that you and I require. That's why you and I must engage our faith. God speaks according to what he can and will do. That's why many times the things God says look impossible. 
Because with men, it is impossible. There is no human way to organize what God has said to come to pass. What you do is simply believe him and obey him. And he is the one who brings it to pass. Somebody here, I see grace coming upon each one of us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, how does faith facilitate fulfillment of prophecies? How does faith facilitate fulfillment of prophecies? Now, faith strengthens the believer to see prophecies fulfilled. It strengthens the believer to see prophecies fulfilled. Hebrews 11.11, 11, it said, By faith, Sarah received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. By faith. By faith. She received strength. So it strengthens the believer to see prophecies fulfilled. By faith, she received strength to conceive seed. Now listen, Sarah was a woman that was 89 by the time she got pregnant. 90 by the time she delivered. You think about it physically speaking. Biologically speaking. What it takes for that woman to carry that pregnancy at that age. After carrying the pregnancy, what did it take for her to deliver the baby at that age? I read some years ago that the, the birth of a child, the birth of a child, natural birth of the child is comparable to breaking 20 bones at the same time. That's 20 bones in the body, breaking it at the same time. If you combine the pain together, it's equal to giving birth to one child. Now, this woman was to give birth to a child at the age of 90. It would take some unusual strength for her to deliver. And how did that strength come? He said, by faith, she received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age. So when faith comes alive and strengthens the believer, you are able to deliver things that even when, even the, when it looks impossible to come to pass, is delivered. Simply by faith. So it strengthens you. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. And this is important because to see prophecies, prophe prophecies fulfilled, we must receive the prophetic word in our mind. We must receive it in our mind. The Bible says not all men can receive this saying. Matthew 19 and verse 11. We must receive it. We must have the capacity to take what God has said. There are some things that God has said that look so heavy. God's servant said when uh, in the powerhouse, you know, he will stand and begin to issue for the prophetic words that God has spoken concerning this commission. It was too heavy. Some people left because it was too much. How can they be talking like this? It was too heavy. Not all men can receive this. Thing. So there is, there is the strength required to be able to receive it. So prophetic word must be, you must receive it in your mind. You must be able to accommodate it. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> Some years ago, I heard a, a pastor shared with me. He said he went somewhere God's son was ministering. And he said, when he said one thing, said two things, said the third thing, he said he carried his Bible and ran out. He, the, the thing was too much for him. He carried the Bible and ran out. He said, how can somebody be talking like this? How can, so, how can a human being be talking like that? He said, he said one, he said two, he said three. He carried his Bible and ran out of the church. This thing is too much. That's prophetic words usually for many. They are too, they, it's too heavy for some individuals. So they hear it and they just pass it by. But prophecy must first be received in the mind. Secondly, we must, we must believe the prophetic word in our heart. It must be a heart-seated conviction. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. Romans 10 and verse 10. So there must be a heart-seated conviction on what God has said. So prophecy is not just what you agree with in your mind. It's what you believe in with your heart. Your heart must be rooted in it. Shout hallelujah. And then we must work out our part to see the prophecies fulfilled. So it's not enough to accommodate it in the mind. We must come to the point of being convinced of it in our heart. And then we must begin to work out the demands. Put to work what it demands. Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. The Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. James chapter 2 verse 18. It says, show me your faith without your works. And I will show you my faith by my works. Work it out. Work it out. So don't just claim what God has said concerning the year. Do what God has commanded concerning the year. It's so important. We must get 
committed to the demands. We must get committed to the demands. But we must be committed to building strength into our faith by feeding on the word of faith. We must be committed. So we build up strength consciously by feeding on the word of faith. Romans chapter 10 verse 17, it says faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We must be addicted to word consumption. We build strength into our faith by feeding continuously on the word of God. God's servant said in the, in the second service, he said you don't build faith by prayer, you build faith by the word. You build faith by the word. Whatever is taking away your word appetite is stealing strength from your faith. This is so important. If you are now going to be valiant in faith, then we must build up strength into our faith by addiction to the word. Addiction to the word. We're giving books of the month, for example. There are opportunities for our faith to be built. We can renovate our faith in this month. And come to a point where our faith takes on a new look. Begins to deliver new results. By building it up consciously with the word. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. This is so important. So we must, we, must, we must ensure that we build up strength into our faith. You look at giants like Paul the apostle. They were men of books. They settled down with the word and built their faith until their faith delivered unusual results. For you and I, this month, I see our faith delivering unusual results. If you believe it, say it loud, amen. I said, I see our faith delivering unusual results. I see our faith delivering unusual results. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I see our faith delivering unusual results. If you believe it, say it loud, amen. That's what it takes. So settle down with the word. Get committed to the word. Get dedicated to the word. Let this month be a month of word addiction like never before. Settle down with the scriptures. Settle down with books. Settle down with tapes, with, with, with messages. And let them infiltrate your spirit. There comes a point where your spirit man is so charged that nothing is permitted to torment you. You are so charged in your spirit. Your spirit man is so alive and on fire that nothing is permitted to torment you. Shout hallelujah. I remember years ago as, you know, I began to, you know, build up and grow up listening to the word of God, reading books and materials from God's servant among other things in inoculating my spirit. One night I went to sleep and as I slept, there was an attack in my sleep. I got up in the morning and I looked at the time. I saw that there was still small time. I said, Satan, I'm going back to sleep. If you are strong, come back. You know why? Drunkards don't talk normally. When you are intoxicated, your conduct is already calculated by the influence that is inside you. It is not your mind that is working. I went to sleep. That is 2007. This is 2024. He has not returned back yet. Why? intoxication of the spirit by the word that was taken in. For somebody this month, I see that intoxication level entering another dimension. And everything that has been contending with you shall clear off the way for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe it, say aloud, loud amen. As you conclude, take note, we must engage in a fight of faith to take delivery. God gives freely, but man takes forcefully. God gives freely, but man takes what? Forcefully. He said, I may receive the things that are freely given to us by God. <laughs> but the Bible says that from the time of John till now, the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Freely given, forcefully taken. And the force that takes is the force of faith. Lift your hand to heaven. Give thanks to God for his word you have received today. Father, thank you for your word that has come my way. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Before we go any further this morning, you are here, you have not given your life to Jesus, that's the starting point. That's the number one key for anyone to enjoy this adventure of faith. First, you must be born again. 
you must be born again. You must be born again. Wherever you are, you say, Pastor, I, I don't know Jesus yet. I'm not yet a child of God. And listen, it's not what men call you. They may call you church member. They may call you church worker. The question is, does God call you his child? Until you are identified by God as belonging to him, what men call you will not matter. Wherever you are, you say, I want to commit my life to Jesus. I want to become a child of God. I want to be born again. I want to be called a child of God by him. Wherever you are, quickly stand on your feet. I want to pray with you. All over this place, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Are you clapping for Jesus as they stand everywhere? What a good God. What a good God. What a good God. Number two, there are those who need to rededicate their lives to Jesus. Something has gone wrong along the way. You have missed it somewhere and you want to start afresh. You want to have a new beginning. You want to recommit your life to Jesus. Quickly, also stand on your feet. I want to pray with you. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Quickly, stand on your feet. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Are you clapping for Jesus? They're standing everywhere. What a good God. Father, thank you. Now, if you have done that, responding to the first or the second call, quickly, lift, suspend feeling of form for a moment and lift up your right hand before the Lord and pray this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, loud and clear, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I am a sinner. I cannot help myself. But I know you died for me. On the third day you rose again just to save me. Jesus, come into my life. Take control of me from this day forward. I will follow you, no turning back. I will serve you, no turning back. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep your hand lifted. Father, today I thank you for these precious people. They have confessed Jesus as Lord. Now give them grace to keep following you all the days of their lives and never turn back. Thank you for doing it, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Congratulations, it's a new day. Please complete the card given to you. Submit it to the official closest to you. You'll be given a We Love You card. After the service, you will take that card to any one of the new convert tents outside the major entrances to the tabernacle. You drop the card there and they'll give you a gift item from the church to build your faith. Also, take advantage of the Believers Foundation class. It takes place every Monday. Tomorrow Monday, the first class, and next Monday, the second class. It will give you a very firm and solid foundation for a glorious work with God. So please take advantage of it and be blessed. If you are not able to make the physical class, perhaps because of your work, we have an online version of the class. Please take advantage of it and give it full concentration so you can begin to enjoy the manifestation of God's faithfulness in every department of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Once again, congratulations. Hallelujah. Shall we rise everybody on our feet this morning? And would you express, first of all, gratitude to God. Lord, thank you for your word that has come my way. Thank you for your word that has come my way. Now begin to take grace, to take responsibility. I receive grace to take practical responsibility for every prophecy that has come my way. Believing in it, receiving it, and putting it to work. I receive grace. Lift your voice. And take grace from God. Take grace from God. It's God that works in us both to will and do of his good pleasure. Lord, I receive from you grace. 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 Grace, O oh Lord. Grace, O oh Lord. Grace, O oh Lord. To take full responsibility for every prophetic word that has come in my direction. Now pray from the depth of your heart. Pray from the depth of your heart. The prophecy has been released, but it's your duty and my duty to receive. It's your duty and my duty to believe. And it's your duty and my duty to put it to work. Lord, I receive today the grace required to put every one of the words received to work, to do what is demanded in order to see delivered what is, what is desired. Lift your voice and receive from God grace. Lord, I receive that 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 grace. Pray from the depth of your heart right now. I have come to connect with that grace this morning. 
let it be made available. Let it be made available. Let it be made available. Father, thank you for it. And blessed be your holy name. You are worthy of all the praise. For in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. It is done. Give Jesus a big hand of praise as we receive our Father to bless us. Hallelujah. Can I have you declare this is my year? God is here to change my story. And he's changing it from glory to glory. He's changing my story from glory to glory. He's changing my story from glory to glory. One more time, lift up your two hands and thank God for what makes happen whatever God says he will do. For showing you what makes it happen. Faith is what makes happen whatever God says it will do in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Amen. Faith is no cheap talk. Faith is hard work. Faith is not a belief system. Faith springs up by a discovery of God's plan and purpose and plugging into it with a sense of mission to put it to work. This shall be a year of wonders in your life. Yeah. Because science only follows them that believe. They don't flow by witches, by wishes. They flow by obedience of faith. In the precious name of Jesus, whatever God says to do, it's within our capacity to do if we choose to. He won't tell us to do what he cannot do. I want to bring you into favor. Okay. Take pleasure in the affairs of my kingdom. And you have committed me to bring you into favor. Isn't that simple? You want to experience financial fortune? Commit your finances so my covenant terms of tithing, reaching out to the needy as enabled. Simple. He will never ask you to do what you, he will never ask you to give what you don't have. God will never ask you to give what you don't have. Preachers may try to do that while playing on people, but not God. His commandments are not grievous. Now, grace to put to work whatever we claim to believe. Now, show me your faith without your works. I show you my faith by my works. What you say you believe is one. What to do to prove it is the real thing. Faith is not believing God. Faith is obeying God to prove that you believe him. So as to commit him to make good his promise. He said, do a kingdom. The kingdom of God is not in words. But then power. Lift up your two hands one more time. Jesus, help me to make the most of this year and take full delivery of my own Fortune 2024 package. Help me, Jesus. Now reach out to him in prayer. Help me, Jesus. And help me, Jesus. And help me, Jesus. And help me, Jesus. And help me, Jesus. To take full responsibility of what every prophetic line demands for delivery. Help me.
In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. May I recommend that each one takes time to take any proven faith book as part of your study project for this month. It will go a long way to boost our understanding, which is the source of the faith that works. Faith comes by hearing and understanding the word of God. So he sent to the body, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, for the perfecting of our faith. For the edifying of the body, building up. Till we come in the unity of faith. Come to the level where they are. Towards the fullness of the stature. You never find any strong faith man who has not drank from the resources of giants of faith before him. Never one. No matter the calling, sir. Never one. Tell Osborne Drew from William Branham. Egan Drew from Smith Wilson. David Drew from Egan. That you will never find giants are born of giants. You never find a giant of faith who has not drank into the resources. Giants before them. No one can raise himself. You better wake up, sir. I spent so much money, but that's not important, but so much time. Someday I'll bring the picture of my library to you. It's, it's a walkthrough library, it's not a shelf. You walk through it like you're in a major library somewhere. You'll find books there of 1970, 1972. You can't grow by chance. You can't grow by wishing. It's brought me to a point where there's nothing he says I can't believe. There's nothing he says now that I'm going to wonder about. Develop capacity so you can gain command. Study to secure his approval. Study, study, study. I told that senior pastor that came, I said, I won't give you any book for free. Me too, I buy it. <laughs> but I give you one it. I won't give you forever. I pay for my books when I get them from the bookstore. I pay to put in my library, and I'm the author. But I'm not the printer. I'm not the owner of the machine that they used to print. So I have to pay because I have to maintain the machine. Praise God. Hallelujah. You better wake up instead of buying nonsense things around town. <laughs> Nothing that corrects destiny like is work with God. A quality work with God will dignify your life more than any skill. Anybody can develop. Help me, Jesus. Most of the turnaround points in my life came by sparks from the sources of giants of faith, including Matthew 33, including hearing from God, including prosperity, including church growth. Without reading those things to build up, you won't get there. Nothing was without faith and nothing will work beyond your faith. Yes, sir. Nothing will work beyond my faith. It's to everyone according to his faith. Yes, sir. So the more you build your faith, the greater the events of your life. Mm. Lift up your two hands. Wow. Lord Jesus, I pray that no one remains a crime baby in this church. Yes, <laughs> Lord, Turn commanders out of your people. Yeah. Grant every one of us a sense of discipline for growth and development. Yeah. Deliver us as individuals 
from time wasters. Yeah. From things that do not add value. Yeah. Let this year be a turnaround year for every one of us. Yeah. And take all the glory. In the name of Jesus, no one shall be left behind. Yeah. That to have entered the realm of fortune will be known by even your enemies. Yeah. Finally, answer to your prayers are guaranteed. But delivery demands that the answers meet you and me singing, rejoicing, and praising for delivery. Harvest time demands harvest order of joy. He appointed to them weeks of harvest. I must be welcomed with joy. So your answers to prayer, my answer to prayer, demands joy and rejoicing for delivery. May we receive grace to stay joyful all through this prophetic season of answers to prayers yeah. and beyond. Yeah. As the Lord lives, before the six weeks remaining is over, your answers are tangibly delivered. Yeah. Every item on your prayer line shall be ticked answered. Even today and throughout this week, there shall be answers being delivered to you. In the name of Jesus. Everyone called barren will return with evidence of God has wisdom. Every single marital delay shall be broken openly. Every form of business failure and frustration shall come to an end. Favor will replace every form of misfortune in anyone's life. Yeah. The good news is, every storm in every marriage shall be calm. Yeah. As if they never existed. Yeah. Every separation shall be spiritually restored. Yeah. In Jesus' name, so shall it be. Yeah. Now we've had on your marks for 21 days of prayer and fasting. And now as we ended it, go. So the race has begun. You want to get maximize this season? The race has begun. Next Sunday, strategically, passionately, committedly, secure a soul coming along with you. In honor of Jesus, and neither honors me, I will honor. It shall be a most fruitful week for year for every one of us. And let's start right now. Anybody you pray over that's not saved shall be saved. Yeah. Anyone you pray over to invite will follow you. Yeah. Anyone not saved among them will get salvation here. Yeah. And your reward will be in the open. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Shall we together share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship? Praise God for this my portion in 2024. Congratulations, amen and amen. Congratulate somebody as you go. Be blessed as you do. If you came after the worship offering was received, there are officials around the altar and various exits carrying late offering tags. They were to drop your offering and be blessed. All our new converts, be reminded to take the We Love You card you have been given to any one of the major entrances to the tabernacle. We have our new convert tents around there. You drop those uh, cards in the tent and pick up the gift item that is waiting for you. If you want to share your testimony in the healing miracle service, please quickly get to any one of the major entrances. Our pastors are there to document your testimonies. Be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ.
Hallelujah. All of those who are here for the healing miracle service, let's quickly make our way towards the faith entrance or the faith arm of the tabernacle, also the grace and glory arms. Let's do that right now. Officials, please assist them as we get sent. Also the front rows of love and hope arms. The front rows of love and hope arms. So those at the back, please move forward. Those who are seated at the back, please move forward. 